following us for I hate you sometimes. There was a chance, Chris, but it happened behind the scenes where our intro was playing. So that was the only time you could have seen us. You just missed it, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead, Amanda. What are we doing here? What's what's going on? What is this? Uh, Yeah. Good evening, all you minties, and welcome back to another episode of Reels Talks with your host, the amazing Amanda, my lovely co-host, the uncanny Omar, and our special guest, Norwegian assassin, Lars Pearson. Welcome, Lars. Thank you. you Uh, Special guest. Is that how you see yourself? (laughs) <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Um, no, uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, quickly, my name is Lars Pearson. I am formerly of Wizard Magazine, currently of Mad Norwegian Press, and I am here because, you know, I'm not good for very much, but I am good for talking about comic books and sci-fi and Doctor Who in particular. Um, I have written or edited or otherwise been at the center of... A, 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 yeah, ah, thank you, someone in the uh, feeds putting Mad Norwegian Press, about... Uh, I 25 books on Doctor Who ish. I I co-write with Lance Parkin uh, this timeline to Doctor Who, a history, uh, which is a million and a half words of Doctor Who goodness. And uh, so, you know, I'm not good for much, but I'm good for talking about Doctor Who. So you can imagine my surprise recently when, you know, I get notification on my phone that there is a new video on near mint condition and omar my good friend omar is on near mint condition talking about doctor who with the, uh, with with another woman with another woman, <laughs> I, another woman. I didn't even know you like doctor who honestly what I you, ta- you know i like doctor it's who. like what and you've co-written 20 books or you 20, 25 to- something like Whatever. that yeah. and if i had to sum up the emotions i was feeling at that moment in one word that word mm-hmm. would be jilted okay jilted jilted, <laughs> jilted. it's a good word good use yeah, of that i mean word. Does, does melanie know about this i mean has she signed off on you know so um no but it's it's lovely to be here talking about doctor who yes awesome well i'm glad to have you here uh hold on a second dream leak got his you got your giveaway package awesome thank you thank you for being here i'm glad you got it uh betrayal i remember when we did a one piece episode (laughs) tina also felt jilted i guess it would be like i'll tell you what it would feel like I, i think i felt jilted one time and that was when my family decided to go to san diego comic con and uh, out of okay, all people in the, in the family, they were like, "Hey, let's uh, let's invite everybody, but Omar because who likes comics uh, more than Omar?" Uh, but anyway, you know what? That's neither here nor there. It was a long time ago. Water under the bridge. I sure. uh, uh-huh. unlike, I'm not bitter about it at all. I'm not bitter. I can no. let go of things. Unlike what Doctor Who is trying to tell us in the first man, you didn't so. go either. <laughs> Okay. That's not helping the case. Uh, but <laughs> here we are talking about the final two episodes of the, or I guess they're not episodes, they're specials, right? The yeah. final two specials yeah. of the 60th anniversary that had the return of David Tennant. So we are going to be talking about spoilers. So keep that in mind. And, and also yeah, giving our thoughts about the episodes because uh, I don't, okay. Uh, who's your favorite doctor, Lars? Yeah. Oh, Sylvester McCoy. Oh man, so you were really excited with uh, the return of Mel there, huh? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, I am more of a Sophie Aldred sort of guy. Um, Okay. But yeah. yeah. Um, No, it it was actually great to have her back. Um, Of course, if you follow the Big Finish audios, you know, they've done a lot to rehabilitate Mel's character and they've really taken her a long way. So sometimes when these companions come back, it's just kind of extension of the you know, characters they have still been playing for the last 20 years or whatever it's been, because she's been in quite a few audios. Okay. And are those considered canon? I mean, wow. What a, what a Pandora's cause box you've opened there. Um, I mean, well, certainly the people who listen to them. Yeah. I mean, so again, that timeline that I just flashed in front of you, that includes everything, you know, that's, that's um, the TV show, the comics, the audios, the books, the everything um but you know i mean obviously the tv show is supreme and even bringing back the celestial toy maker um you get the impression that 
they, they treat it as though he hasn't met the doctor since he was William Hartnell. Well, yeah. there's been an audio of the Celestial Toy Maker, a couple audios. There's been a comic of the Celestial Toy Maker. They just kind of ignore all the tie-in stuff, which, you know, it's fine. But TV shows what matters. It, it, the TV shows what matters more than anything else. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the, the TV show and maybe some of the comics and maybe some of the audio. Are are the yeah, I mean, they're, they're, all have, they're, all, they're all heavily integrated. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, this is a good question. How often do the different media conflict? a good question less than you might think i mean speaking as the poor fool who has co-written a over a million word timeline um it feels like at least 95 percent of doctor who all doctor who reconciles unto itself it's just that we keep arguing about that remaining five percent okay there you go and according to dream leak uh the sixth doctor would have met the toy maker if huh. his second season wasn't scrapped yeah that is true they plan to do it in um, a social toy maker story called the nightmare fair in Colin Baker's second year. Um, but the show went on hiatus and they quietly scrapped mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff they were doing to do trial of the time Lord instead. Um, no. Colin Baker, like when he regenerated, they just, didn't they put a wig on somebody? Is that what happened? Yeah, if they would have they, a wig, yes. They put a wig on Sylvester McCoy. And they didn't even get him. Wow. Why didn't they get Colin Baker back? Isn't that a Doctor Who thing? They get the regenerated? Yeah, it is. But they had, well, Colin was fired. And I mean, this is no secret. Colin was fired mm -hmm. and they did invite him back for like one story. And, and then they would have killed him. And he said, well, look, I'm willing to come back for a full season and do the full season and leave at the end of that. And like, no, 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 no. We just want you for the one story and then kill you. And he's like, nah, I'm just not in, you know, if you're firing me, I'm not interested. Um, then they stuff Sylvester into, into his coat and wig. Wow. Yeah. I assume you know about the planned movie. Hey, Bruce, how are you? Hey, Bruce. Lars, do you know about the planned movie? Yeah. I don't. What are we talking about here? Uh, well, there was the Doctor Who movie, right? That was the planned the planned move. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, by planned movie, I don't know what we mean. Maybe they're planning a movie. Well, I, well, I, I think there was some swirling rumor about that, but there's been a swirling rumor about a movie for you know the last 25 years or whatever it is. Are they so. talking about the writer of Peter Cushing's Doctor Who movies that they planned like something? I'm looking it up to see if that's what he's referring to. It was in the 1960s? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't entirely know what I mean here. Um, if, if there's a movie coming, I mean, at this point, there's rumors about everything. There's rumors about a spinoff with Paul McGann. There's rumors about a spinoff with Unit. Um, there's rumors about everything. Oh, a Unit but, spin. -off. I mean, that, that's the way that Doctor Who, or I guess anything, yeah. In yeah. Yeah. has worked, right? There were always rumors, like when Rose got her own uh, Defender of Earth or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that was supposed to be a thing. Yeah. And again, they do, have, yeah, and they do have some audios for her. I mean, I I was in, I was, where was I? I was in London. I think it was London. Hmm. And the convention, I was in the UK um, at a Doctor Who convention in 1994. 1994. We're at this convention, having a great time. And the organizers, for some reason, feel the need to get up in front of us and announce to everybody, as if it's metaphysical certitude, there's going to be a new Doctor Who series, a full series. Starring Richard O'Brien, who, wow. of course, was, you know, uh, created Rocky Horror. And what happened? Well, <laughs> that never happened. I mean, it was complete balderdash. I mean, this, this is... Balderdash. But, they, but the, yeah, this is the thing. They, you know, they get up in front of us. They say, and this is absolutely happening. Absolutely true. And I was sitting there, but is it? But is it? But is it? That's called um, manifesting. That's what that's called. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's what it's been like. Um, so... Um, yeah, there's rumors about everything. 2026 co-produced by Sony, Disney, and okay. the BBC. I'm not, I'm not that surprised Is that now. official? Is that official? Well, well I mean, I'm sure they, people can say all kinds of things, right? I mean, they and, and it doesn't mean that it's actually going to get made. Well, how many, and, 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 and how many movies way, have been in the work? By uh, the way, for, yeah. all, for all I know, there is going to be a, a movie. But until that official BBC release goes out, I don't pay any attention, to be honest. Yeah. This is, so, this is a weird thing about being... Um, you know, I have a background in journalism and mm -hmm. I don't spend a lot of time sitting around speculating what's going to happen. 
I don't look upon that as my job as a Doctor Who researcher. And I don't look upon that as my job as a journalist. A journalist is supposed to tell you what occurred. A journalist doesn't, you know, invent elaborate theories about what is going to happen. Um, the funny thing is, like, people come rushing to me and they would go, Lars, 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 who do you think River Song is? I'm like, I have no idea. Why oh, that was watching? Really days. Why don't you keep yeah. watching and find out? Um, honestly, if nothing else, it's just a waste of energy because, you know. Um, and, and that's exactly what's going on right now within the yeah. MCU, right? Yeah. Like, how many times are people going to get pissed off about the casting of the Fantastic Four? And I'm like, why are you even talking about this? Like, none of this, is, none of this is real until they actually announce it. Like, and, and people yeah. genuinely get upset. And I think that's why it drives like the clickbaity people, right? Like, oh, oh, this is the inside source now. Uh, yeah. My favorite one so far is the whole uh, Lizzo as the Silver Surfer. That was my favorite rumor <laughs> that I heard. And that was like, <laughs> and, and the, and the people losing their minds in the comment section, I was like, what, what, what am I, what am I even doing here? I don't even social media for this reason. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was one of my favorite ones. Yeah. So I first, mean, the very first special was, um, that one was based on a comic book, which Amanda and I reviewed. And that's really freaking cool. It's the first time I've ever seen Dave Gibbons actually do an interview without talking about Watchmen. So that was refreshing. Yeah, he, he he actually has done an interview about the comics on the Blu-ray. Or, well, they were on the DVDs. Okay. Um, because, yeah, they have got him in it before. Because, you know, his one of his big things before Watchmen was he was the Doctor Who magazine strip. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. mean, he was pretty much there from day one, did all the Tom Baker strips for Doctor Who magazine, and then did some Peter Davison's. And it's, you know, it's outstanding work. I mean, there's a reason it's possibly the most reprinted Doctor Who comics ever. But the, uh, but the next... Two specials, they weren't based on any graphic novel or comic, right? They were Russell yeah. T. Davis stories. The, uh, the What was it called, Amanda? The Blue... Uh, Wild Blue Yonder. Wild Blue Here Yonder. We go. We'll walk to the... Oh! <laughs> yeah. I, um, so we watched that one um, together, and I really liked that one. I don't know how you two felt, uh, but to me, it felt like a really good character study on Donna and the Doctor and what they've been through. Yes in the time that they've been apart from each other. And I like Donna and the doctor together. So that was really nice. It was a nice reunion, even though they're older, a little bit different. Uh, it yeah. did feel like a uh, craze and It did mm -hmm. feel like midnight, which was a great yeah. episode. Oh, I love that episode. I, I assume people really like midnight. I don't know. I, I never know. I've yeah. never seen rankings or anything. No, I, I, um, yeah. That was also David. Uh, but that was when they were both separated, right? Like Donna was like yeah, at a spa was, or yeah. something. Yeah, she had a spa and he got on the train. Yeah. But you know, practical effects were awesome. I I really liked the whole mystery. I thought that was a, I thought it was a good episode, and it kind of you know a lot of things were brought up by the Doctor and Donna. Yeah. I thought it was a really good, unique way of like. I've missed you, and this is what I've been through when we weren't together, and vice versa. Like Donna revealing to him how much yeah. you know he meant to her, while also fighting this creepy alien that doesn't understand size and density, and it, that, that that was really unique. Because yeah, yeah it, I mean it is sci-fi, but to keep it on both of them, and that's it. That was nice, especially after the first episode where we had a lot of people involved. And I'm sure there was going to be disappointment in people that expected some cameos from like Matt Smith or Peter Capaldi. Yeah. Anytime yeah. there's these anniversaries, people expect. I can't wait to see the disappointment with Deadpool 3 because everybody and their mother, according to rumors, is in Deadpool 3. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and I, I think Kyle Reynolds is having the most fun out of anybody with like oh, yeah. He's pictures, really of Photoshop pictures of, look who showed up on the set today. I love it. I love it because he's now trolling everybody that believes any of these rumors. Um, Jimmy Stewart will be in Deadpool three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it was like we were in Deadpool three. Uh, what about YouTube? Did you enjoy that one, the second special? So I really did enjoy Wild Blue Yonder because of the character study. Just getting, I, and also like the body horror of the aliens, how they couldn't get their arms right, and the way they would change shape and just the details that um, Russell T. Davies did with developing these aliens where 
they like when he lost his tie, but it was gone because it was on his purse anymore, right? She's like, Where'd your tie go? Because he had taken Stop. it off. Lizzo could be in Deadpool 3. Taylor Swift <laughs> might be in it. So we have a lot of opportunity. Oh here. All right. She's the only one I think might be because she's actually BFF with Ryan Reynolds <clears throat> and his wife. What? But Omar Lizzo really or, or Taylor Swift? Taylor Swift? Oh, Taylor what are we talking Swift. about? Taylor Swift, not Lizzo. Okay. Uh, no, Very but I, I really enjoyed the, the just getting to be with the two of them. And because I was wondering why are we bringing back David Tennant, right? What was the purpose of bringing his, his, version of the doctor back and i think you started to get to see a little bit of that in this episode where the doctor's been running and running and they of course bring it home in the giggle which is the third which is the third one but he's been running and running he's had all these things happening to him he's never really stopped and really gotten to like sit with a lot of it right and i think this is one of those episodes where you start to see him having to deal with that and so for me it was and what a clever way to go full circle with the bomb and how it's like a three year like waiting period for this bomb to go off and how I just, yeah, it was, is very enjoyable for me. I like this one a lot. Norwegian assassin, Lars, what did you think? Um, See, see what I'm going to say next. I worry it's going to get me in trouble um, mm. because I no, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was on, you know, I uh, very watchable, very clever. Um, Tennant and Tate are always great. A lot of great chemistry between them. Really enjoyed the way that they subtly played a difference between, okay, I am the doctor. I'm the creature pretending to be the doctor. I am mm -hmm. Donna. I'm the creature pretending to be Donna. Um, they obviously had all that worked out and done very well. Um, it's very clever. I really liked it. I didn't love it. Mm -hmm. I would say it was about a seven out of 10. Um, okay. and and I think the reason I think the reason is because it's very good staple sci-fi. I'm sorry, I'm getting some reverb here. I do apologize. Um, I'll try to adjust. Um, it, it, it was a staple of sci-fi on this alien ship um, with some doppelgangers. It was very good, very good chemistry. I'm not sure it had anything to say. Um, unlike Midnight, one of the reasons that Midnight is great and Gridlock is great. Is that mm -hmm. they have something to say about human nature. They have something to say about the characters trapped in these situations. But here's just the Doctor and Donna on the ship. And even though their chemistry is really good, nothing is being revealed that we, the audience, don't know. When David Tennant is expressing angst about the Timeless Child and about yeah. um, the Flux, it's like, well, of course you're angry about that. Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? Yeah. Um, so I felt it was good. I know that the moment I said I didn't love it, people think I hated it. That's not true. Oh, no. Um, I, yeah, I thought it was very, very enjoyable, but I didn't love it. I think there need to be more characters in it. I think we need to meet more people who were stuck in this insane situation and what yeah. them. Then I think the story might have properly unfolded, but it was very enjoyable and very watchable. Yeah. That that is that is interesting you bring that up because I think like if they had done that, then you would have had people complain that why didn't they just focus on Donna and David Tennant? That's what I've been waiting 15 well, years. I don't care about these other people. Yeah. So it's kind of, a, I, I think they did yeah. a good job, like choosing this particular story with just David and Donna together. I, I really, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I didn't like it as much as midnight. I don't think it was creepy oh. enough. I thought the creatures were creepy enough and the practical effects were nice. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I can see why it, it, you also weren't a I'll be honest, dude. I didn't even know what the flux was. Like, oh. I, didn't yes, watch, I didn't watch Jody. Uh, yeah, Jody I hate Turner's that, but I didn't watch it. Yeah. So I was oh, like, wait, Amanda, you didn't you didn't watch it either? No. Amanda, how long have you been watching Doctor Who? Uh, when Omar told me I looked like uh, Billy Piper in 2008 when I first met him at his wedding. And then when I moved to Kentucky... <laughs> He every Tuesday night, me and my now husband, his cousin Corey, would go to their house, have dinner, and they'd watch. We'd watch episodes of Doctor Who together. Uh, yeah, so that's where. It, but um, yeah, some it was something about I don't know. Right around Peter Capaldi is when I had trouble just maintaining sticking with the story, and I think that's where I I did actually go back and rewatch them. I think it was last year after Christmas. I just went through because they all had been on Netflix, I believe. They just had dropped. So I had gotten through half of Jodie Whittaker, but I had not 
finish it. Okay. So that's where I sat on that one. One of the odder details <laughs> that nobody watched Flux. Well, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, show restraint, Lars, show restraint, show restraint. Um, one of the odder details about Flux is that it did sort of, it was sort of mentioned in passing. There's there's a level of devastation going on. The mm -hmm. Flux is it's kind of sort of the antimatter cloud from Crisis and Infinite Earths, more or less. Oh, okay. And, uh, okay. and it, it was kind of mentioned in passing that you did feel like a substantial, if not like half the universe had been destroyed and it was never put back. And you're like, well, wait a minute, is the Doctor Who universe just half empty at this point? Bear in mind, by the way, that about a third of the universe was destroyed in Legopolis. So, I mean, if a third of the universe was destroyed in Legopolis and about half the remaining universe was destroyed in the Flux, there's I, mm -hmm. how much of the universe is left? Of course, yeah. the universe is a big place, I know, but still. Of course, yeah. I am. I'm a, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, and it kind of, you know, I missed it. So it was really not, I mean, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people felt like that with the first special. Like, oh, man, it's so nice to hear David Tennant's voice. And it's cool to see Donna because it, she was a favorite amongst Whovians. I know my buddy Jeff, uh, who got me into Doctor Who to begin with, he really liked this. So it's a damn shame that he didn't get to live to see right. this special. Like, mm -hmm. he passed he away a month ago, so he didn't get to yeah. see the specials. Uh, I would have loved to known his thoughts. But uh, Omar, where did you leave off? Um, or maybe you mentioned this last week. I apologize. Where did where did you stop watching it? Same, I think uh, as Amanda. Oh my gosh, I think I made it seven episodes in, eight episodes in of the first season of Jodie Whittaker series. Okay. Yes, I think you know Peter Capaldi series. I, I love Stephen Moffat. I think Stephen Moffat was such an amazing writer, and with the whole Matt Smith era that started off with I don't know, it, 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 he grew on me so quick. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, somewhere around the Peter Capaldi era, I also felt like maybe I was just burned out on Doctor Who, or maybe there's just so much going I, on. I think that's part of it for some people. Yeah. It, it, it isn't it isn't even necessarily the Moffat era's fault. It's just that you hit that brick wall where you need to take a break. Well, yeah. and it was one thing after another, and then, you know, you see retcons all over the place yeah. In, yeah. <laughs> within yeah. his own season for the stories and the mythos that he created. And I was like, I get enough of that in comics. But yeah. that's because different writers take over. Yeah. Um, yeah, I but I, I still think he wrote some of, some of my favorite episodes. Jodie Whittaker did it fun as a character. The run just yeah. had some bad writing. And this is something I've heard too. Um, yeah, I didn't have any issue with her. It was just, I think I needed a break. And I'll, pro I'll probably go back and rewatch some of those. Because um, yeah. I've got the, the, the Blu-ray set. So I'll probably go back and watch some of those for sure. Moffat mm -hmm. just ran out of ideas. It was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, you put yourself yeah. in a corner, right? When you're limiting the regenerations, when you're like, okay, we're only doing 13. What's going to happen next? I think that, yeah. yeah. I think that, I think that, uh, I think that Moffat did have ideas. Actually, Doctor Who magazine, uh, the new polling showed that mm -hmm. the highest rated Doctor Who episodes now of all time, according to this new poll, mm -hmm. number one, Heaven Sent. Which is the Capaldi episode where he's yeah. trapped in the castle? Yeah, that's a really good episode. Where I like that. That was picked as number one. Number two was World Enough and Time, which is the two-part um, Capaldi story that finishes out the last season. Um, it's it's yeah. when they're trapped on the ship with all the Mundas yeah. and and so on. That was rated number two. So Doctor Who magazine readers yeah. certainly picked two Moffat stories as their top yeah. picks. In fact, I think like Moffat had like five in the top ten. Um, well, I mean, whenever he wrote for the Russell T. Davis uh, oh, yeah, era, sure. right? Yeah. Like, Gosh, Girl in the Fireplace, Blink. Yeah. yeah. Um, what oh, was yeah. Your, oh, uh, the one that introduced River in the fourth season, uh, yeah. The Library. Yeah. Sounds the library. library. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, excellent. I mean, even the Matt Smith era, but I think, you know, so that's when I stopped for a while. I stopped watching, uh, but there was just, David Tennant was my favorite doctor, and yeah. him coming back to the role and the whole mystery, and even subconsciously i was like okay what if they don't tell us why he's back i mean surely there's a plan right but what if what if russell t davis doesn't ever tell us why he i guess not really degenerated because he did mention that he is a new doctor 
but okay. anyway, uh, I just, what would you what would you give uh, the second ep special, Amanda? Lars gave it a uh, seven. What would you rate it? Yeah, I think it would probably for me be like an eight out of ten. Yeah, I agree. I think an eight out of ten for yeah. me too. It was really good. I yeah, I was I was I was just happy to see two of my favorite characters on the screen again. Of trying course. to solve this oh, sure. yeah, there was yeah. some creepiness yeah. to it. I, I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. They just and I think that's what they were trying to go for with that episode because they do have such great on screen chemistry. And this was a way to showcase it in this episode and yeah, just really focus on them. I think that's what the goal was for the episode. And I think they did, as far as that, if that was the goal, then they, yes, they did a good job in focusing on them and that piece of it. So mm -hmm. uh, here's another question that I think only Lars can answer. Oh, uh, <laughs> what do you think of RTD keeping the timeless child? Um, Is that the, that's Jody Whitaker season? Yeah. Yes. It's, it's basically that it's, oh God. Uh, well, okay. The timeless child of itself just makes me want to throw up into a bucket. No. Um, wow. Okay, it, you've got it, it's the revelation that the doctor is not from Gallifrey, and the doctor um, was originally this child for, that was the original source of regeneration energy, and it's the means by which the Time Lords develop regeneration. Basically, it makes the doctor the most important person, basically that, that founded Time Lord Society. Um, oh. and it's a vomitous, unworkable idea. Um, it would be like if you said Spock was the original Vulcan and was the original founder of Vulcan society. And you're just like, you're taking this, this excellent character and you're making them too big, um, in that universe. Um, the other thing about the timeless child is that it's kind of, it's just kind of a dead end. Once you've made this revelation, well, what is there more mm -hmm. to say? Um, now, in terms of RTD keeping it, I don't really begrudge him that. I mean, you know, it is there. And if he chooses to, we'll see if he chooses to pursue it or not. As as something that would that the doctor would find unsettling, it would be like if someone found out they were adopted. That's what it's like. Yeah. Um, so that he would find it upsetting, sure. Man, I I'm so glad. Have, I don't have any interest in it being pursued because I'm not sure uh, there's much there to pursue. I, I'm yeah. just glad that ridiculous things like that never happen in comic books right <laughs> no in never. case you're watching for the first time that was sarcasm i was laying it on really thick or, or in any <laughs> media at this point. comics are comics are uh yeah someone's in feed saying it kind of ruins the doctor the doctor is no longer just a random person escaping. Yes. yeah mm -hmm. this is very true no i think i think it's a tragically terrible idea um that it that rtd revisited it you know I mean, that's fine. The, the damage oh, so was they done. Did the backwards the of the last Jedi, right? Like yeah, last right. Jedi well, no, like, like, nobody special. Yeah, the, da the damage was Jedi. done at the end of Whitaker season two. Russell might as well refer to it. It really doesn't, you know, matter there. Um, I was underwhelmed with the specials. I feel like Russell T. Davis is trying to do another midnight and failing miserably. Toy Maker was great though. I don't want Tenant to come back again. Oh, so. I, I would be. I, mean, happy I love Dave Tennant. <laughs> but I will, give, I will give it to. Oh, I was gonna say I will give it to um, Neil. He is uh, Neil Patrick Harris. What he well, he's a great actor. <laughs> he's sure. really good. He did, yeah. You know that famous scene in Labyrinth where David Bowie, David freaking Bowie, very talented yeah. guy, couldn't spin the balls right, so they had somebody mm -hmm. else come in yeah. uh, and put yeah. their hand underneath the cape to spin the balls uh -huh. in there. Yeah. You know, Patrick Harris is delivering lines right. with an accent, juggling balls. And I was like, what? He's insane. How talented yeah. is one dude? Yes. Yep. Doogie yep. freaking Hauser. Racing down to Doogie Hauser. Yeah, he could be so much more. <laughs> and changing his accent. like, and, and, and not only that, but doing the marionette puppeteering. Like, what the hell? Wait. <laughs> I thought there was a lot of CG, but you still have to know some basic puppeteering yeah. to freaking hold those things oh, yeah. together. Yeah. Um, well, that's all right then. Oh man, when he was doing that, that's great. Yes, when he's like about each of his companions and what happened to him, and he's like, "But she lived in her consciousness." Well, that's all right then. I guess that's fine. She may not have a body, Billy, but she still has. Them. Well, yeah, as you may, so. yeah, well, as you may have read, Neil Patrick Harris didn't know what Doctor Who was. Well, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Well, which I find a bit odd that he hasn't seen it. I thought was very yeah. strange. Well, no, he hasn't seen it. That's that's understandable. But he doesn't know what it is because he he worked with Russell on It's a Sin, which was a, a miniseries mm-hmm. that Russell did. It's currently on HBO Max, by the way, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And Neil is in that. Um, and so it was uh, Russell who said, hey, by the way, Neil, do you mind being in Doctor Who? And Neil received the script and he had to ask Russell. He's like, no, Doctor Who is an alien, right? You know. <laughs> Because he, he didn't know. But he's like, well, this plays to your strengths, Neil. You know, it's it's juggling and magic and, and dancing and all that good stuff. So, yeah. 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 Luckily, yeah, the I, tone maker claimed to have reshuffled the Doctor's past so we can blame the timeless child. Yeah, oh, man. Is that what we're doing Yeah, I, Like Superboy Prime <laughs> punching walls? Oh, yeah. That shitty story? That's Superboy Prime. He was punching that particular wall. I do, yeah, I, I I don't know what to make of that remark. The toy maker goes, "Well, I made a jigsaw of your history." Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, I was wondering how he got the master inside of his tooth. Oh, why? Yeah, and who picked up the master, the tooth at the well, end? Was, that's also. Late, oh, I bet, I bet you, I bet you, that's the new villain um, who it was announced is going to be played by Jinx Monsoon. Um, oh, who is? Who okay, is, I heard about that. Who, yeah, who, who appears, heard any of this? Jinx who appears? Who, who appears on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that should be really good. Um, yeah, because yeah, this this hand comes in and grabs the tooth. I I, do, I don't have any foreknowledge, but I bet I bet you that's Jinx Monsoon. Ain't nobody that's gonna that. see them in unit though. Unit? Oh, we don't know. Maybe they're well, part of the top of the building. Oh. Oh. We don't nobody know who the villain is the, supposed the, the, to be. We just know who the actor is. <laughs> it is yeah. heavily hinted in the first episode, right? When the meep, we, I thought it was Neil Patrick Harris he was talking about. He's like, well, boss. See, I did wonder because the meep goes, oh, when the big boss. And I was like, this isn't yeah. the toy maker's MO. Um, so I bet you that was referring to something that will show up in the Shooty Gatwa season. Yeah. So we have the big boss and the one who waits, yes. which. Yes. Hang. Correct. We, but it's, it's not Rory, right? He's not going to be on that. No, but I mean, like, that's... So we have... I don't know if they're the same person, two different people. Oh, that's but. right. That's what it, that's what they call Rory, right? The 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 guy who waited? The Centurion who... The one who... Yes. Yeah, the one who waited. No, but I don't yeah. think it's mm-hmm. different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we By the way, we should quickly, uh, if it helps, um, talk about the fact that this is the Toymaker's second appearance. Um, yeah. He did... There was a story in... You don't need to have seen it. But there was a story in 1966 from season three called The Celestial Toymaker. And mm-hmm. um, you don't need to have seen it, which is fortunate because you can't. Because it was a four-part story. Um, th- episodes one through three are missing. Um, because, of course, 97 Doctor Who episodes remain missing. They're not in the archives. You can't watch the video. Um, they did find episode... They had lost episode four of that story. But they found it in Australia in the 1980s. Um, in a way though, it's fortunate you can't see it because I'm going to go on a limb here and suggest that I love the Hartnell era. I love William Hartnell as the doctor. I love the companions. I love the stories, but the celestial toy maker story sucks. (laughs) It sucks. It sucks so hard because, because the celestial toy maker is this demigod and he traps them in his realm, in his toy room. And he turns the doctor invisible and mute. And so it's three and a half episodes, three and a half excruciating episodes where the doctor is invisible and mute. And the two companions are playing slightly menacing children's games. Um, Yes, that's right. They are animating it. And that that animation is coming out next year. Um, But people who review it have a hard time reviewing it because what is there to review? It's just the companions playing slightly menacing games for three and a half episodes. Um, so yes, it might be better that it's missing. But episode four is fun. Episode four. It, it's definitely worth having. It's episode four. I, I think okay. it's really cool um, how media like that shows up from time to time. Like yeah. I remember talking to my friend Jeff about that. Like how, oh yeah, they just found, like he would get excited. They just found like two more episodes and now they're going to clean them up and put them on a DVD. Yeah. Uh, the animation looks terrible. Is it is it AI animation? Is oh it, my god! Oh no. Like the secret invasion animation in, it, it, intro. It, it, the animation didn't really, I guess, bother me because you know the Celestial Toymaker's realm is this kind of lurid fantasy realm. 
So basically, what I think what they're trying to do is kind of Disneyfy it. Which makes some sense. Um, the lip syncing yeah. wasn't great. That's what would concern me. Um, but if you're going to do this lurid fantasy realm, I think it's probably fine. You know, I don't know, but we we only have a trailer. We haven't seen it. Yeah. So the giggle. Yeah. the giggle. The giggle. Yes. Yeah. The third episode. I think it was the longest one out of the three. If I'm not probably. mistaken. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, written by Russell T. Davis, and yeah, featuring. Again, David Tennant and oh. Catherine Tate back as the dog. Oh, we didn't talk about my favorite part was seeing Wilfred because I, I didn't know he was going to show up at the end. Oh. I knew he had died. Uh, the actor had died. I didn't know he was going to show up at the end of uh, the second episode. So that was yes. a really nice send off, even though you just see the top of somebody's head in the third episode because yeah. he had passed away. So he the, he didn't yeah, film the third episode. It seems that they he was going to be in the giggle, and it seems that yeah. he yeah. fell ill quite quickly. Um, yeah. So you know that's unfortunate, yeah. but it was nice to have him back for you know that brief. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. it was a good send off, and yeah. it was really nice to see them together again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the giggle starts off really quick. World's falling apart. Neil Patrick Harris dances with the doctor. Very interesting. And then it all goes back. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was it was an interesting episode because I, I was expecting I don't know what I was expecting for episode three. Like I knew it was supposed to be a, I figured it was a culmination of the last two episodes and where we were going. Um, but yeah, so for those who aren't familiar with the toy, the giggle storyline, there has been this giggle since the creation of television, basically, that has been permeating in our minds and it. I guess just activates and everyone their levels spike. They go a little crazy. They get mad at each other. They decide they want to, you know, fly a plane to the ground. A lot of bad things happen. Unit and the people around unit have these special bands that keep their levels um, in sync. And so doctor and Donna go back in time to figure out what's going on. And that's when they are introduced to the toy maker, which of course the doctor already knows who he is because he had met him previously. Yeah. So we also get our bi generation sequence, and we are introduced to our. I guess he's the fifteenth Doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Technically, yeah. Technically. Um, okay. So I, 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 I uh, go watching that scene. I was like, oh, are we what? really? I had to pause it. I was like, are we what? really going to let we let let David Tennant go right now at this time? Like, we still got like thirty minutes oh, yeah. left of this episode we're just gonna let him i was a little i was a little <laughs> irate because i'm like we got david Tennant. they couldn't let him regenerate at the end um and melanie was like what are you doing why are you pausing it and i'm like okay, okay. so we wait, 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 you, you paused it because you were emotionally overcome well no i paused it because i was like how much of this episode is left because i thought well, it hadn't been on that long oh man I, I, I was upset so then i unpaused it of course and then we watched it and i was like Oh man, is that what we're doing? Because I, I do love the part that he, you know, he said Alonzi. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, uh, because you know, in the pre when he previously regenerated, he said, I don't want to go, oh which ripped everybody's heart. Yeah, uh, oh, like, yeah. oh my god, like and I thought this time around it'd be really pretty if he said something like, Okay, I'm ready to go this time, but instead he said Alonzi, which is let's go, which is nice. I thought that was a nice bringing it back to that mm -hmm. moment. Uh, and I love that Donna was with him. And so was Mel. That was cool. And yeah. yeah. And in, I didn't expect just like, I guess no one else. Cause no. they were no. really, really no. quiet about this. It was no a surprise. Hard. It was hard. No. <laughs> but uh, it's a, sh is it Shuti Gatwa? Is that how you pronounce Shuti it? Gatwa, yeah. Shuti Gatwa. Yeah. Or, yeah. uh, you know, if, I, if, I, yeah. if, I, if, I, if I've learned to pronounce Arnold Schwarzenegger's name, I think yeah. I can do this one. <laughs> uh, holy crap. He comes in and you know they 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 separate their clothing like he's just wearing the underwear and yep. David Tennant's wearing the pants and mm -hmm. I was like well this is interesting and I, and I, I think everybody in the room had the same reaction the actors did on the show which is what what who what are we what does this mean and, and then of course your mind starts going like okay wait, wait, wait a second did they just did they just like separate the doctors are we really saying this is seasons one through the end of uh, Jody Whitaker, and then this is the beginning of a new series, which is actually they are dubbing it a new. They're calling it season one, aren't they? 
I think so. Yeah. That's that's all I know about the new uh, series. Yeah. Because I guess our original doctor, there, his story is now he is a family man hanging out with his newfound family. Oh. I mean, oh. Lars. No, I have a lot of thoughts on that too. You have no heart. I have a lot of thoughts, have a lot of thoughts on just you have well, no heart. It's the it. It makes me no, wonder why they why they chose the route they chose with by generation and keeping David Tennant's character around in some form of fashion. I I understood when they gave Rose a, a human doctor that would live on another earth in another like where they can never cross paths. I understood that and I was good with that. Um, this was a very interesting dynamic because we already got, I was like, oh, this is a second. I just wonder why Martha David Jones didn't get her own David Tennant. Donna? And is she going to come back in unit? I mean, unit's a thing. She was in unit. Like yeah, where are Nikki, her? <laughs> She got the short end of the stick. Uh -oh. She did. Yeah, she really did. Um, Okay, well then I want to hear both of your all's thoughts, and then I'll uh, about David Tennant staying. And what? Wait, okay, first of all, what did you all think of Shuri Gatwa as the yeah, new doctor? Go ahead, Lars. Um, I mean, so far, so so wonderful. Um, I mean, I'm familiar with Shuri because I have seen Sex Education. Mm -hmm. Um, I have not. Way, yeah, all the way through. Actually, weirdly, we Chris and I have like two episodes to go. Um, we're two episodes from the end. Um, he's wonderful. And, um, but of course, if you're familiar with sex education, it takes a little strength of will to not see him as that character. Um, no, I think he's great. I think he's wonderful. It is a bit odd to introduce the new doctor and the predecessor is still hanging about the place. Um, I understand concern that, you know, maybe it needed to be shooty got with show. Um, and I know that it will become Christmas, but it's, it's an odd choice. Um, and an otherwise great episode, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amanda, what about you? What did you think of uh, Shooty? Well, I mean, as soon as he was on screen, and I have also seen Sex Education, and like I've told you many times, he was also appeared in Barbie. <laughs> if you yes. remember who he was. <laughs> uh, no more, you've seen the movie. You don't remember I've, I've, who he was. I've seen Barbie. I don't remember who he was. It's okay. But I immediately, I was taken with him. I find him to be just a joy in that 30, I think it was 30 minutes he had left where he got to showcase his acting abilities and who he was, what kind of a doctor he was going to be. So, and if he wants to stay pantless, I'm okay with that. Um, but <laughs> that's just me. But it was weird that we still, I agree with Lars. It's weird. We still have another doctor lying yeah. around. Yeah. But I, I don't, I, I don't know how I feel about it because we had such a meet an amazing send off for, and I know he's technically the 14th doctor. We had such an amazing send off for him the first time. But now he's back. And was it I guess amazing? It was heartbreaking. It was awful. That, that's what I mean. But it was a it was a good way to send off a, a doctor. But now he's like, well, I'm still around, and he, he, he was family. He, he great. died alone. And what about like, Rose? I would she not? Rose be got her own doctor. She's fine. Whatever. She wanted that doctor. <laughs> she now he has a family. Well, she's, she's got the wish version of that doctor. You, See, okay, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, I, 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 I can see where both of you are coming from and where people are coming from. I actually enjoyed the fact that we got a different ending because if we're going to bring back David Tennant, why would you want to rip my heart out again and then stomp on it in front of me? Sure, let, let him have yeah. a, I'm okay with him having a happy ending. Um, it, it, goes, it goes back to that episode, like, you know, when he tells Don, I'm the happiest I've ever been. I thought that was really pretty. I'm okay with people having great. happy endings from time to time, yeah. even in sci-fi. You go it's to hell, Lars. Uh, <laughs> I see your face again. Happy ending. I'm glad he got a happy ending too. <laughs> uh, okay. It's just, I feel we'll like it just finally. Yeah, Should we, are we call it something other than the happy ending? I mean, that is a bit yeah, of a but I mean, honestly, uh, right, what else was no. this going well. to happen, right? Like, what, what if if they had. Ended it with David Tennant dying again. He would have regenerated, and it still would have yeah. been. What if David it was a high choice? Nobody, would have, nobody was expecting Shooty to arrive this early, so it was a nice surprise to have him come and share the screen time with David Tennant, and yeah. then hold him and tell him, "I got you." Yeah. That was beautiful for anybody that is struggling that doesn't, because nobody knows what anybody's going through except you. So for yourself, I don't know. I thought it was beautiful uh, to be holding no, you beautiful. up and saying, "I got you." That was awesome. I loved yeah, it. That, that was good. No, there were some good moments. Okay. Here, here, here's the thing. If I'm cringing, here's what. By the way, overall, I think the Gale was hugely successful. There was a lot to enjoy about it. It was scary. It was funny. The Toymaker was great. 
The cast was great. Neil Patrick Harris was great. Again, again, again. Very well done. I mean, we're creeping up. I, I would give it a qualified nine out of ten. Um, but the but there's a bit okay. Yeah, I ahead. do cringe some um over effort. Now let me get to the end of this because it's kind of tangled. I do cringe with efforts to make Doctor Who domestic because the ethos of the show would seem to be, hey, adventure, excitement, yeah. help people. Um, fight monsters, all this sort of stuff. There's a moment in Tomb of the Cybermen when the Troughton Doctor is talking to Victoria and he says, you know, the exciting thing about our lives, traveling in the TARDIS, is that nobody else can do them. You know, do this. Nobody else can mm -hmm. do this. That's what makes it exciting. So, but against the grain of that, it's like, oh yeah, all this adventuring in time and space, whatever, hang out with the family and be domestic and have lunch and pancake breakfasts. And it's like, oh, ugh. <laughs> However, so I know, so I, I, I really efforts to make the doctor domestic just make me sick. But well, because there's been some great stories where he tries to be domestic and it doesn't work. But um, this is clearly a bridge to the shooty era because Russell has basically telegraphed in interviews that he realized that the a PTSD doctor like he did with Eccleston maybe mm -hmm. isn't the best choice in the world of 2023 where frankly, the news is more horrifying and the world in which we True. live seems to be more horrifying. And therefore a, you know, very angst riddled, traumatized doctor is maybe not the way to go. So how do you achieve, a, you know, so the shooting doctor is clearly going to be, you know, have moved on from such concerns and you need this bridge of the tenant doctor figuring things out so the shooty doctor can be more, I guess, free. Um, yeah, he didn't really explain this here. He said, "Well, we're doing therapy out of order." We're, you know, it's like the shooting doctor. Yeah. Like, well, I'm I'm good because you put in the work on yourself. It's like, okay, I get that. Does that mean you're going to have to reintegrate at some point? Because that's like, how, yeah. that, that was the one that stuck with me too. Like, yeah, how, yeah. how do you mean we're doing it out of order if you're not regenerating and you're not time traveling back to this point? Yeah, what, what does that mean exactly? Right, that need to be better explained. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. I will say that there were some things that probably needed to be better explained yeah. in this episode, but I think I've gotten used to that with Russell T. Davis writing, especially when it's a micro writing mm -hmm. exercise of three yeah. specials instead of a whole season. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I, I can I can see that, but I was I don't know maybe I was just blinded by this idea of having this happy ending with a TARDIS behind you. And you yeah. already know he ain't going to be sticking around. He's already taken well, off the bars with his knees. I know. And he takes Rose everywhere and, now. And this is yeah. David Tennant. Like, remember, that's what he told Rose. He was like, that's the one adventure I don't get to have is live a normal life. Yeah. And he Ugh. even told... He oh. even told it could, uh, be, it couldn't have been like any doctor. I mean, couldn't like Matt Smith's doctor have a domestic happy ending with River Song if they well, wanted to bring like, back Matt Smith's happy ending, it, right? Can yeah. he <laughs> or a buy generate word? again? Is that what's going to happen? Well, every... it, this this is where it gets confusing. Like you know, because what if the tenant the the tenant doctor gets shot? Does that mean there's two shooties doctors about the place again? I think they just oh, no. said, okay, this is great and awesome. We're going to need to remerge at some point, and you know, you're going to need to become that, has to happen. that would have solved a lot of problems if they'd said mm -hmm. it. But now we have to kind of who knows? Well, I mean, we're, yeah. still, we're still guessing as to. I mean, we can try to put things together. I swear to God, this feels like I'm breaking down Evangelion instead of Doctor <laughs> Who. I, I'm not kidding. Because why did he have David Tennant's face? You know, I mean, I don't need it in writing. I know I get the idea that maybe this is, you know, and even Donna says, maybe this is why you got your face back, right? Maybe you're just tired and, and, and you need to relax. Yeah, the doctor seems to be subconsciously influencing their faces because, of course, he subconsciously influenced himself to have Peter Capaldi's face to uh, yep. ba based upon this, um, you know, resident of uh, Pompeii that he'd Pompeii, met yeah. um, to yeah. kind of send oh. himself a message. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the same thing there. It's like, well, you know, you need to come home and rest a while. Again, which all things being equal just churns my stomach. But here as a bridge to the new era, I I can sort of better excuse it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, someone's mentioning the feed, of course. Yeah, this this isn't necessarily the first time the doctor's been domestic. It is true that the doctor spent um more than yeah. 20 years on Derillium with River Song. Yes, that's true, but 
you know, this, this, this kind of reiterates my point. The doctor is not a normal person. <laughs> and yeah. even being on Drillion for 20 years with River Song is not something, quote, normal. Here yeah. it's like normal and boring is good. And I'm like, oh, is that why we're watching this show? Um, but The Next a- Great Adventure. Wasn't there a sh- movie about that where just regular old life is the great adventure? What was that from? <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I don't, I, I personally don't really buy that. Oh, the, what, you know, isn't that the, the, isn't that the tagline, the hook? Right? Like living, wouldn't that be? The, yes, the, that's the adventure? what I'm thinking. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Go be with your kids, Peter. Yeah, that was the that, one, That's yeah. the event, yeah. Uh, I, like I said, I think, you know, it still leaves a lot open, a lot of questions that uh, we may yeah, get yeah. Uh, resolved. Yeah. But um, the biggest one is, yeah, what's going to happen when Shooty gets killed? Does that mean that he can buy generate too? Or does that mean that, well, and does that make them, and then, 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 then that's the writing yourself into a corner there. Does that make them immortal? You can't Infinite keep that. Doctors. <laughs> yeah, Infinite no, doctors. Again, they, they, in a way, should have said, it's, this is like how Madrox works in um, X Factor, that he sends out his duplicates to do a certain thing, and then they come back, and he reintegrates and gains that knowledge. And if, and if they'd said, okay, you go off and you know spank your in a moppet with the noble family for like however many years, and then come mm-hmm. back and integrate with me, and then I will become the person I am now, then great. That would have solved everything. Well, not solved everything. <laughs> 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 I mean, what? everyone. <laughs> it, I, I would, I would, I would love to have seen uh, Peter, Cup, uh, not Peter Cup, Paul the uh, Christopher Eccleston come back. That would have been nice. One oh, day, absolutely, will. absolutely. Will. I, I, yeah. Man, he still speaks. Like he's so professional too. Even though he was angry about all that, I saw a, a clip of him talking about Doctor Who, and yeah. he was in one of the audio things. Wasn't Quite he? a few audios. He's done wow. like he's done like I've started like five, six box sets at this point. So, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. vindicated after yeah, what exactly. happened for Love and Thunder yeah. with what he I, had to go through. <laughs> yeah, I've I've heard the first four of them, I think. So yeah. Okay. He got his face back because the studios wanted him for the movie for the 60th anniversary. Well, yes, that yes. is that that's, that's a big in deal. the story in the uh Doctor Who universe. Well, yeah, it, it, true explanation. It's been an odd experience because of course it's the 60th anniversary, but heavily focusing on David Tennant and Catherine Tate, and rather than the whole cornucopia of Doctor Who. And I know that they brought in David Tennant, one, because David Tennant's great. And two, mm-hmm. because um, to bring back in the lapsed Catholics, as it were, you know, there there were a lot of people, they haven't watched Doctor Who for a while, but they were yep. telling me, oh, well, if David Tennant's back, I'll watch those. I'll watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh, th- thanks for that, Rich. Anyone who wants Doctor Who audios, BBC Sound oh, cool. has a bunch free, globally streaming legally. Yes. Including um, the David Tennant, Tom Baker team up. When awesome. was that? Uh, that's happened a couple times, I think. Uh, there's one yeah. called Out of Time. Um, that has David Tennant and Tom Baker in it. Um, yeah, nice. and they're doing a new. They're, they're also doing a new big 60th anniversary um, series that I have not had time to listen to yet. But yeah, mm. I, I know that they were doing the 60th anniversary series. What was it? Time in the uh, Time on the TARDIS. It's where the old companions and the old Doctors yeah. on the TARDIS. Those were really, those were really sweet. I really like those. Were. Yeah, tale, tale, tales, uh, tales of the TARDIS or tales. That's it. Awesome. Yeah, and I think I don't know where you can stream those, but I. St- Saw them on YouTube. Yeah, it's on the BBC's. Yeah, it's on the BBC's iPlayer. They may also be on YouTube. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, overall, I uh, just quickly. Uh, I thought, yeah, the giggles very successful. Except that, yeah, Russell Davis is one of the most gifted writers of his generation. Um, he is continually astounding. Again, if you've seen, it's a sin. Is wonderful. With Doctor Who, he has trouble sticking to the landing. Um, and so much of the setup up here was great. The, t- the jokes, the terror, it did trouble me how easily the toy maker was defeated. Um, it's like, it, apparently to defeat this guy who's supposed to be scary, you just need to challenge him to a game of catch. And it turns out he's not very good at catch. Clearly. Yeah, you're right. He, clearly. I, yeah. When he dropped the ball, when he dropped the ball, I was like, really? That's it? Really? Yeah. Really? I was surprised. Um, but then again, I was surprised at the end of Whitaker's first year when the, the big dude in you know the leather, which they bring back, it turns out to defeat him, you just have to shoot him in the leg. And it was the same thing. He toppled right over. And I was like, wait a minute. 
they've defeated him. Um, so, but again, these are quibbles about what I thought was an overall very successful special. Um, what about what about you, Amanda? What what did you yeah. not like about it besides the domestication of well, <laughs> the doctor? <laughs> or, or did that bother you at all? Um, no, I mean it was the domestication of the doctor is fine. It's I guess it's the way they went about handling the storyline of this tired doctor. And instead of him, it would have been, I think it would have been nice to see David Tennant's character. Like, I know he says Alan Z, like he's accepting it, but it really would have been okay for him to go full circle and then choose to re like almost to choose to regenerate because he, his body chose it for him. But now he's like, all right, I'm at peace now. I'm kind of like, I'm good. And then he regenerates right into shooting character. Uh, but for me with the episode, I, I think none of the none of the big qualms with it really. I liked the toy maker, and mainly because Neil Patrick Harris is playing him. I wonder if another actor is playing him. If I would have enjoyed that character as much, or thought him to be as good of a villain as he was in the um, in the episode. I do agree. I think it like the way they chose to defeat him might have been a little bit weak. I was hoping for something a little bit stronger. Um, but it is Doctor it, Who. I can see a game of catch ending that. It, it's it's not it's not the game of catch that bothers me. Actually, a game yeah. of catch for the end of the world, just for, with the world at stake. I actually think that's okay. Very Doctor Who. They thing. needed to do something clever with the yes. game. Yes. What are, what are oh, the doctors that I was waiting for? To do something that outfox the toy maker. It turns out, well, he just dropped the ball. That's what because it's two against one, like that. Yeah, he's just yeah. not good at catch. So yeah, that was it, that felt weak to me as well. I agree with that. And okay, yeah, I mean, I like that. I like the concept of the giggle. I mean, we've seen it kind of before, right? I think someone the mentioned the signal in 1969. Yeah, so we've seen it before, but you know, it still works for this for this uh, for this storyline. But yeah, I think that's pretty much my biggest qualms. I just, I guess I'm, I'm still not on board with the bi generation. But maybe it'll, depending on how that works out in the end, or they just forget about his doctor until they need him for something else. But hopefully that will come around to mean something later on in like Shooty's run or something. I don't know. Maybe he could be the curator. That's why he bi generated. Okay. Maybe I don't know. I, I I like to think that they've got something planned, right? Or I hope maybe so, yeah. T. Davis has something in store for. It's like DC Comics, right? We're gonna have a crisis, but we're gonna shoehorn in this character that could revert everything back, just yeah. in case yeah. shit doesn't sell, right? Yeah. Just in case these comics don't sell. Oh, That's what I bring it back. I feel like maybe Tenet is Russell T. Davis. Like, well, maybe if viewership starts dropping again, we could throw in David Tenet. Well, in see that, in yeah, and Just Disney has the streaming rights, so and the, yeah. we all know they apparently had something to do with. They made them go back and do some yeah. post production right for like the special effects. Yeah, they did. Disney had asked them to. They said it didn't look good enough. I don't know anything about that. Part of the charm of Doctor Who is the crappy special effects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this does potentially muddle the narrative going forward because if the shooty doctor gets into trouble in the current day, you're going to have to ask yourself, well, there's another doctor down the road who can help you. And the excuse yeah. of, oh, well, he's just off having a pancake breakfast with the noble family. That's not going to fly. So I think, you know, again, I, it, I don't, I'm not saying they're going to use him like, oh, man. No, like, no but it, it's going to beg the question. Like, if there's a big oh, problem, the Spock, why, why are they not in the new the Star Trek movies, right? Remember Spock in the new Star Trek movies? They only like, brought him back when necessary. In the original on, in, uh, in the new movie, right? It was pretty cool by J.J. Abrams. Cool. He's back. It's the original Spock. Oh, he's going to live his life on a distant planet. In the second movie, he's like, man, we can't figure out how to defeat this con guy. I got it. Let's give Spock a call. <laughs> call what? We don't want to. We don't want to mess with the space time continuum too much, but we need to talk to. I him. hope they don't do that like every season. I wonder what the other doctor would have done. I mean, or wouldn't I mean, they like they're both traveling in their TARDISes and he has Rose and 
he has the new girl, Ruby is her name, and they just cross paths accidentally. Ruby looks like, a lot like Clara, too. Like, I don't know if you all does, have yeah. blonde hair. Uh, well, yeah. no, you, you can solve this with a throwaway line of, like, should we call the other doctor? Oh, he's off in the TARDIS somewhere fixing a problem on Pluto or whatever. But True. it's something to be worried about is the thing. And, of course, fandom will not let this go. Fandom will no. constantly be like, well, when are we seeing the tenant doctor again? And I, yeah. I don't actually think we will. I, I think Russell will want it to be, you know, the Gatwood Doctor's show. So I don't think we will <laughs> see the tenant doctor for a while if, well, who knows. But, you know. I, I will say during the bi generation scene and when Shooty's holding David Tennant, I looked at my wife and I was like, well, let the fanfic begin. Yep. Because you know, uh, as soon as both of them are holding yeah. each other, people are like, oh, I got this one. Yeah. No, I meant Rose, uh, Donna's daughter. That's what I was talking about. He's oh, still, okay. like, that's the Rose. Not No, that Rose is in another universe, but yeah. Well, defending the Earth, I want to know how Soho became the center of geekness. Edgar Wright's film, Good Omens 2, mm -hmm. and now the latest Doctor Who. It also has one of the world's best comic shops in the middle of it. Don't know. What would that be, Rich? What's the comic shop? Is it Forbidden Planet? Lars, you've been there, right? You've been oh, Forbidden Planet. Yes, I have been there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice. Great place. Great place. But yeah. why would they Good point. Have that, uh, <laughs> something? They Thank share you. the same memories. Do they? I mean, they share really? the same memories, but it's the it's I they thought it was like PTSD doctor, right? Healing, and, and then shooty, like no more of the baggage. Let's go have some fun. Yeah. I still have he still has the memories though oh yeah he still uh, has the memories well again this is where it gets very strange it's like the shooty doctor seems to imply oh I do have benefit of your memories that's why I'm the way I am it's like okay um, so he healed himself we just didn't well, well, it, well it, also the memories he's not formed yet is the problem yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. okay 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 Th uh, thank you for putting it like this it's like the X-Men never have help from the Avengers. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Now well, that makes like for a geek like yeah, that. Yeah, why, like, why doesn't Ant-Man call like, the rest of Avengers to deal with Kang? I mean, why did he have to do it by himself? No, I no, I mean this is yeah. absolutely true. But like I say, every you know, if there's a big, big crisis at the end of Shooty's first year, the fans gonna wonder why did you not call the David Tennant doctor? So I don't know. It's it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. By the way, thank you to thank you to anybody in the feed who is joining us from the United Kingdom. It's late where you are. Yes. Why are you Why are you not in bed? Thank yeah. you. Oh, hey, Leo. Leo, uh, Leo, who are you, buddy? Uh, hey, Omar and Amanda, I just dropped in to ask if you've seen The Boy and the Heron, and so what's your opinion on the movie? Um, we did. We, we went did. to see it on Sunday, and I wanted to review it, but I feel like I need to give it another watch uh, because do. it's a very artsy film, and yeah, I, I want to do it justice, uh, and that's yeah. why we didn't review it. I liked it. But I like artsy films like that. Feels like a fever dream, and that's all I will say. I Definitely don't know about Amanda. What did you think, Amanda? Do you like uh, it? I would need to rewatch it. Um, I was tired when I walked into that theater with my eight-year-old daughter, and she was asking a lot of questions. So I think I need to rewatch it without all of that. But there were a lot of. Um, obviously Miyazaki, a lot of the elements, it's supposed to be his magnum opus, even though now they're saying it's not his last film. He's doing other things. Oh, it's never going to be his last film. He's a, yeah. he's a true master. He will keep yeah, working but, until he passes. Exactly. And there are some beautiful, beautiful animation and imagery in it. Uh, we saw the subbed version. Am I right? Cause we saw it yeah, in the original Japanese. Yeah. So that was, that was awesome to get to see it in that format. I'm used to watching anime dubbed because that's how usually it is on Netflix or I know, what can I say? I'm not, no, but I, 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 am, I am not at all. all. Like you can watch it however you want to. I think with Miyazaki yeah. films, I do have to watch it in the original language. Uh, Neil well, Gaiman made the best Go ahead. Oh, I, of what do different Doctor Who's are in Sandman. I will dig it out. Ah. Okay. Uh, who is the character you would like to see return? Who? Captain Jack. I love Captain I Jack. I love, but I don't know. Was he, he in Jodie Whittaker's twice. season? Uh, he won't Lars? Yeah, twice. 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 Mm -hmm. oh, never mind then. Yeah. We'll have to go. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll have to rewatch them or watch them for the first time. Yeah. Uh, or wait, was it? Oh, no, it was just, or was it the one? I'm sorry. No, maybe it wasn't. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. He shows up halfway through season two of her and then at the, at, in the special. Um, 
that's a very good question because they've brought back so many characters at this point or the actors you'd like to see and you know come back are no longer with us yeah, um, yeah. i mean elizabeth sladen as sarah jane it was gen- you know she could have been there yeah. the end of time she was so good um was that was a good line too. Was um yeah i mean well but the other time lords are all dead because like lala ward as romana would be quite fun yeah i think she's always very good um oh wait oh leela leela there we go louise jameson we're, we're- Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Louise, Louise, J- Louise Jameson, who's always excellent, um, and uh, yeah, as as an older, more thoughtful Leela, I think she'd be great. What about you, Amanda? Who would you like to see come back? I mean, someone who hasn't. It's hard because some of the people of the eras I've watched have have returned. Um, mm-hmm. You know what? Let's bring Mickey and Martha back. Let's see what they're up to. I want them to have some justice. Martha, yes. yes. I don't think they'll be hiring Neil Clark anytime soon. Or no, Clark. no, probably, probably not. Yeah. Soon, yeah, yeah. That's oh, probably God, not. what but, did he do? I can't keep I'm up with this stuff. No, I know you can't. Yeah, I and mean, also again, of course, John Barrowman will not be back as Captain Jack. What? There's, what did he do? Yeah, someone else said that too. We really need it's, to catch up. Yeah, no, it's 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 very complicated <laughs> and difficult to explain. But they've they've. Oh my god! All right, fine. Bring back the map. Yeah. What about the, the master? Oh, the actually, master. oh, Miss, oh, Michelle Gomez is Missy. That Michelle would be Gomez. There, I would no, be oh, good yeah, with her coming back. Actually, Michelle Gomez in any role would be 100. Oh, really super. Yeah. yeah. All right. I like I like the male master back. The guy from the uh, oh yeah first, third season of Doctor Who. Uh, yeah. David Tennant's first season with Martha yeah, Jones. I can't remember the actor's name. John Simpson. Yes, Something that guy's good. awesome. I yeah, really like to good. see him. He is very good. He got a really yes. good send off in the Capaldi era, though. So, um, oh, well, he yeah. came back. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, are we doing yes. that episode? Okay, yes. I guess I need to rewatch yeah. it because I don't remember that. Remember that? Remember that two parter that I was saying was rated yeah. as now the second uh, highest. I remember Doctor the Doctor Who's throwing Spray himself off of that building. That, John that, Simpson. Now that. I remember that. Okay. Wow, I. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was excellent. That. It was excellent. Yeah. yeah. Woo, crazy okay. sort of, you say the adipose, you want them to return. You know who looks like the adipose? The adipose. The <laughs> in, in Boy and the Heron. There I was going to say, the Boy and the Heron, they look like... They, they my look like brother adipose. was going off. He's like, man, Miyazaki's getting really lazy with his character designs. I'm like, shut up. Well, people love uh, the adipose. My sister has a stuffed adipose stuffed on one? her bed. From oh. Sandman, nobody died. How can you kill an idea? How can you kill the personification of an action? Then what died? Yes. Who are you mourning? A point of view. Yeah, is that death, right? Death says that, I think. I'm happy with Shooty's first year. Won't feature Cybermen, Daleks, Santerans, Weeping Angels, or any other familiar threats. Yeah. We get new enemies. Oh, has that been stated? Yeah, yeah. yeah. John Sim. Well, yeah, uh, I, like I, know, I know Russell has stated, yeah, John Sim. Russell has stated that the Daleks, you know, need a break. So I don't know. Fair. They'll, every doctor has to fight the Daleks at some point, but yeah, they're going to take a break with the Daleks. Exposing himself on the set. <laughs> God, John Berman is appropriate to this cuts on YouTube. Yeah, yes. Wow. Notice how gingerly I am treading on this topic. Yes, it's true. Man, maybe surprised. I should have asked. Oh, more, more War, War Master. Master. So Derek Jacoby played the War Master, and uh, he is always great. Always one of my very what? favorite actors. Yeah. Who was the war, what? What season was the War Master? Uh, that was that was uh, end of season three. That was well, he was the peaceful Professor Yana. On okay. you know at the, at the when they go to Utopia, um and then oh uh, okay and then he turns into John and then he becomes this psychopath. he's the he's the older gentleman that becomes yes uh, and then he and then he becomes um the John Sim master yeah but but see Derek Jacoby again tremendous actor he was an I Claudius I actually when I was um in London I actually uh, went to a production of Macbeth purely because he was the star. Um, and he's been playing the war master for big finish and he's just super, he's just, Oh, okay. So he's been in the big finish, uh, really quickly. Brode Juan Kenobi is saying, give us the epic announcements. Okay. Just for you, because you watched our doctor who review. Here we go. Uh, new warriors, epic collection, volume one, new warriors, epic collection, volume two, new warriors, epic collection, volume three and volume four. And that is Is what's coming out of December of 20. 24. No, that's not real. No, there might there I, might be some others, but they don't matter really. Yeah. It's all about New Warriors, baby. Uh, I'll be announcing those hopefully next week, sometime with Curtis. <laughs> hopefully before Christmas time. Uh, yeah. just waiting on covers, oh. buddy. 
We need more Joe, Joe Martin as the fugitive doctor. Okay, that was another one I missed because that was Jody Whitaker. It had to have been, right? Yeah. This, this was always the problem here. I thought Joe Martin uh, was wonderful as the doctor. But I was also like, why are you introducing this character? It's Jodie Whittaker's show. There will be no time to explore this character. Yeah, and sure enough, and sure enough, there wasn't. I mean, what we glimpsed of Joe Martin, she was terrific. But I was like, there's never going to be time here to fully explore her. And there wasn't. So, um, yeah, it's a problem. And again, again, when, once it's Shooty's show, or it's, you know, uh, I'm sorry, is it, are we doing Gatwa or Gatwa? Uh, I mean... I will I'm take not, any. I'm, 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 I am just now learning Gatwa? the first name, so you all worry about the second name. Okay. I'm going Shooty. I'm going to call him Shooty. <laughs> I'm gonna go, okay. What, what, what is the Shooty Doctor show, you know, like the Joe Martin Doctor would sort of just get in the way? Yeah, no. Who's Susan? Which Susan? Uh... Susan's, the gra Susan's his granddaughter from season one. Um Oh, she's still alive, isn't she? Oh, yeah. In fact, I just the... in fact, I I just saw her. I was at Chicago Tardis um over Thanksgiving oh. weekend. Um oh. she she and I and I hope I didn't mishear her. She made some intimation that she had been asked back to the show at some point. Um, but and it may have been it may have been recent or not. I don't know. Um, but the script hmm. wouldn't let her refer to the doctor's grandfather. And so she says, "Well, if I'm not, if I can't call, him, if I have to call him the doctor rather than grandfather, I'm not doing it." Because that um, been retcon? Is that why? No, I mean, no, it's not. I I don't know what was going on there. Maybe it's just an innocent miscommunication. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, she is the doctor's granddaughter. So, oh, hmm. the girl in the fireplace. That's who I would have loved to have seen come back as a companion. oh, uh, Madame de Pompadour. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, her. Yeah, she never got to come back. And and, and I mean, Sally Sparrow makes sense because she went on to do. But Lots she's of Oscars. Yeah, she's a little baby. I don't, I don't blame her. <laughs> she's probably yeah. too big for Doctor Who at this point. Oh, Never there we go. Andrew Garfield's a little guy who has the terrible American accent. <laughs> oh my god, the horrible, horrible Tennessee accent. Nobody wants to see that guy back. I've never seen an episode of Doctor Who, and nor do I know anything about the show. Where would I be a good starting point to watch the show, and where I can I watch it? Now, before we talk to, before we let the expert answer, yes, Amanda, what what, what episode would you say? Well, I started with uh, Christopher Eccleston's run and went from there. And I, if you, you know, if you only have so much time, that's a good place to start. If you're like a, you know, into more of the modern type of stuff. But yeah, I mean, but that's just my personal opinion because I got to start with Rose, and that's what about one episode that can summarize how good one I'm episode? Because oh. you got to hook him, yeah. right? He's like, I ain't gonna watch yeah. a bunch of mannequins fighting this girl. You <laughs> <laughs> this the santa claus is oh wow one episode um oh gosh well honestly something like blink yeah that that's I, I didn't want to say that that's the one yeah. yeah to like get them hooked on what doctor who really it can be it shows you how smart and how good doctor who can so be blink is and great. yeah of course Sally sparrow you get um yeah. that actress Steven i can't Moffitt. think of her name right now yeah um just pick any episode second part uh Recommend Blink. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this, I, I thought about this too because they he looks like his dad, Sean uh, Pert, Pertwee. Is that how you huh. pronounce it? Sean Pertwee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He looks like his dad. Yeah, he does. Um, it, it, honestly, I think a good starting point is just going to be Christmas Day on Disney Plus. Watch Shooty's first episode because yeah. Russell's kind of gotten across in interviews that you know this is basically as much of a relaunch as the Eccleston season. So I would say get in on the ground floor now, explore what everyone's talking about. And if you want to loop back and watch previous doctors, then sure. You can go back to Eccleston, yeah. you can go back to Tennant, you can go back to Smith, whatever you want. But I would start with I would start with Shooty on Christmas Day. Oh man. Fear her and what becomes what a brick. That? Excuse Fear me. Her. She's a paving stone. Um what, yeah. what was that one called? Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters. And it had a good intro because it had ELO, right? It had ELO. Yes, it did. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was really good. Yeah. Uh, where to start? Classic series, Doctor uh, Sarah Jane episodes, current series, yeah. Eccleston from the start. It is hard to start early, right? Because, like, how many episodes are missing? Well, 97. 97. 90. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think starting at the, well, if you want to watch the very first story just for kicks, sure. But I think, you know, at this point, you know, whatever they call it, Shooty's first year is going to be season 15, or series 15. 
Yeah. There is a staggering amount of new Doctor Who series to be watched. Then if you want to loop back to classic, you know, that's fine. God bless you. But there's plenty of uh, 21st century Doctor Who to be watched first. <laughs> is that <laughs> Doctor Bisexual sure. now? Sure. I mean, oh, why not? Yeah. I don't... I don't was it? I mean, him and him has and anybody, Jack and Jack. Uh, well, uh, and this is an honest, honest question, uh, Lars. Has there ever been a? You know what? No, I'm not. not I'm not even going to ask it. Never mind. Forget it, Lars. Sorry. Forget it. I'll get that out of my head. Are you too shy? Um, no, it's not that I'm shy. I just don't want it to go the route that I think it yeah. might. Wait, Bruce okay. has an interesting tidbit about the girl you in the fireplace. Oh, apparently Sophia Miles. that would explain their chemistry. They dated. They did date for a <laughs> while. I, well, no, I think she was never asked back because the story was finished. Was, you know, yeah. when you get to the end of Girl in the you Fireplace. Yeah, when you get to the end of Girl in the Fireplace, I mean, her story's done. There's no need to have her back. I think having her back would just complicate things. She did date David Tennant for a while, it's true. Um, and then he married the doctor's daughter, so there we go. And then he married the doctor's daughter. Yeah, what happened to her? Oh, yeah, she got married <laughs> to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Who happens, and she is actually a doctor's daughter. Man, that's so... David Tennant is like the biggest freaking Doctor Who fan ever. <laughs> yes. Um... <laughs> George, yeah, his wife Georgia has been taken to playing Jenny again in the again in the Big Finish audios. Yeah, you know? a lot of Big Finish audios are really good. I need to hear these audios while I'm editing. Yeah, something. they're really they're really good. They're really really good. Um, so most of the missing episodes have been animated now. Not, is it because not of not not most is pushing it. Um, I mean, quite a lot of the Troutons have, and now two of the Hartnells will have been. I mean, maybe I haven't counted lately, but maybe half the missing. No, not even half. Less than half of the missing ones have been animated, yeah. Most of the missing episodes have been animated. Uh, wait, okay, uh, so to go back to the statement, is it because the audio has been saved or are they recording yeah. it because they have the, the script? Yeah, what, what, so yeah, weirdly, so actually, so yeah, 97 episodes are missing, but we have the full audio library. Because intrepid Doctor Who fans back in the day, with tape armed with tape recorders, recorded Doctor Who off air, and mm. nobody had one full set. Um, but by their powers combined, we do have the full audio library. We have we have every Doctor Who episode on audio. Now, some of the audio quality is better than others, which is why the episodes they they animated first were because those were the ones for which they had the best audio tracks. Okay. Because they, they, they thought, well, we may want to show this in the theater. We may want to show it in a BBC America. Whichever ones have the best audio, that's the ones we'll animate first. So there are some that, like, we do have the audio, but it's not stellar. Like Marco Polo, I listened to it recently, and it's like, eh, this is, you can hear it, but it's not great. You um, are a true historian. That's like well, going we do, back we and do we can. We do we can. Weirdly, they had so yeah. So they've had the the soundtracks out for years. Weirdly, they in recent years just made a discovery called the Randolph tapes, which I think I'm right in saying were again off air Doctor Who tapes that we didn't know about that someone tried to dispose of at a recycling facility, and somebody working at the recycling facility, I I, I think I'm right in saying, I hope I'm right in saying, saw these tapes with those titles and recognized the titles and saved them. And so now there's like that has improved the audio and like the celestial toy maker story and some of them. So um yeah, so we have the full audio library, but it can get choppy in parts. Ah. Okay, I, I see what he's asking. And we, um, we have the scripts. Yeah, oh yeah. The stories have never been lost. The stories have never been lost. We have the so scripts. The scripts are there. Yeah, and in fact, we have what's called telesnaps, which were um this this photographer made some uh, money by like he would aim a camera at the TV screen and it would fire every so often. And so we have, you know, pretty good photos of or many good photos of the actual episodes. Mm. We just don't have the episodes. Um, so the stories have never been lost. You compare this to something like the Avengers, the first season, not the Marvel series, the Spice yeah, yeah. In the 60s. Talking about um, Emma Peel and Avengers. Yeah, I get I gather I'm right in saying that Big Finish went to do stories of some of the missing episodes, and they had to sit around with knowledgeable Avengers people to try to work out what had actually happened in the episodes. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm. because it's not always I mean, you know, there's only so much that they know. Whereas Doctor Who, we've always known what happens, we just can't watch it. 
Huh. Yeah. Okay, so Spider Man 1195 was saying because then the doctors say Isaac Newton is hot in one of the specials. That would have been the second special. Um, yeah. The, yeah. But I mean, honestly, I, that doesn't said, make oh, sense. I like Bisexual, yeah. right? I mean, I find I can admit when they're like the new doctor, he's a good looking dude. David Tennant's a good looking dude. Sure. Well, he had made that comment. I think that's why he's asking because he had made that comment after he said that. He's like, did he say I'm like that now? Oh, like, and I, I like that like, now. And he was like, "Well, I mean, to be honest, I always thought maybe you were like that." So I'm. I think uh, that that's what he's saying. Yes, okay, they are inferring that he probably, yeah. I mean, if you're talking about a being that's been around for over a thousand years, you bet your ass they're probably bisexual. Sure, sure. Talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cherry Kate has a good point. The doctor's been outside of human sexuality. Yeah, They're exactly. I mean, they're healing and interested in anyone uh, in anyone they care about. Yeah, that's I think the best way to uh, describe it. Yeah, yeah. Who among us doesn't think Newton is hot? I don't. Yeah, he, he was I mean, kind of. was kind of hot. He, he so was, is that yeah. canon now? Is that what we're calling? What it, Ma Maverty? Maverty is that what Mavity. we're calling? Maverty. Maverty. Yeah. But I love how he corrected himself when he's like gravity. I mean, I'm sorry, Maverty. Like. <laughs> so is that is that what we're doing now? I think that's what concerned me the most. You guys were uh, nitpicking the final episode. Uh, my concern me the most is like, are we just gonna call it Maverty now? Is that is that what Maverty? Is that what we're doing now? Yeah. That's out of everything that happened in all this. Be done to say he was straight at this point after that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. The doctor yeah. falling in love so often is a bit much, though. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I really, does River kill his well, it River was among like three different Doctor eras too, right? It depends like, on how you define falling in love. I yeah. mean, um, this is the thing: is like, again, the doc. At the risk of stating the obvious, the Doctor is not a normal person. And I always thought, if the Doctor is going to fall in love, it's not going to be with just someone off the street. Which is why River Song makes sense because River yeah. is River is not a normal person. The only reason I think he has so much affection for Rose who for all of her many, you know, um, many of the nice things you can say about her is a 19 year old shop girl is because she he's is. the, P it's because he's the PTSD doctor and he, you know, um, he's damaged. He's damaged. And then weirdly he regenerates into boyfriend material. Um, but yeah, the doctor doesn't really fall in love with normal people, nor should they, because they're not normal themselves. It's not going to work, but yeah. I fall in love three times a day. <laughs> you know, sometimes. Yeah, besides, yeah, besides Rose, it's everyone who everyone who falls in love with him. And why and why wouldn't a normal human girl fall in love with something ex somewhat extraordinary like the doctor? That makes complete sense. Oh, yeah, that she would fall in love with him <laughs> makes complete sense. Oh, yeah, exactly. But yeah. that he doesn't really reciprocate it. I mean, that also makes complete sense. That also makes sense, too. Yeah. I mean, when we talk about the doctor being domestic, there is that wonderful scene in The Impossible Planet when she's going on about, oh, I think I might have a, like, where's this, what's the end game here? It's like, oh, I think I might have a house someday and a mortgage and you can live down the street and won't that be awesome? And of course, to him, that's like a living death. It is. You know, oh. um, you know stopping and, and just having a dog and, and the yard is just is just a living hell. Look at Phil Owens. Dictionary nerd over Ooh. here. The word gravity had been around since 1505 and used oh. to describe the attraction between two bodies since 1620. Newton didn't That's invent so the word. The mavity thing was ridiculous. Well, it's also in the five doctors. They claim that Newton invented punting, which is a common myth. I mean, that he, you know, yeah. punting was, I think, invented after his death or something like that in Cambridge. So, yeah. Rose helped him get through his trauma. River was effectively another yep. time lord, but then there was Yaz. Yeah. Yaz, whom whom the doctor doesn't reciprocate. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, Yaz is kind of, you know, crushing on the doctor, but the doctor's not crushing on Yaz. <laughs> I didn't know that was your boy, Phil. My boy Newton started to work on gravity. 1665, not 1666. I love I'm it. Getting, There's no I end to the anachronisms. <laughs> Thoughts on the doctor having incarnations before Hartnell? Okay, that's a good a, question. A, a, a has tragic, that ever... a, look, sorry. Go, no, no, this is a question for you, Lars. A has tragic, and a tragic, poisonous, stupid idea. Wow, shot down, Spider Man. Well, well because fun. again, the, the problem becomes once you make that disclosure, what more is there to say? Unless we're going to spend time for it, it, it muddles the series' core mythology. And what are you gaining? 
Um, if it produced doctors we were going to spend time with or what have you, then okay. But it's a revelation for uh, the sake of a big revelation. It doesn't, it doesn't give us any story so far. It's given us no added story value at all. And it just yeah. complicates things. I mean, so. but didn't they shoehorn the, sh the war doctor in there too? Yes, again, as a weird. Because they couldn't get Christopher Eccleston. Because they couldn't I get Christopher Eccleston. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a weirdo one-off thing. Yeah, but that was the War Doctor was a weirdo one-off thing. You could just get away with. Someone, in, oh, someone the says you return to the co concept of the Doctor as a mystery. It's not a mystery I'm interested in, frankly. Um, I, I mean, I, it's like uh, X Men: The Hidden Years, right? Yeah. Am I intrigued? Sure. Am I? Did I enjoy it? Hell no. <laughs> or, 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 oh my gosh, what was the uh, Ed Brubaker one? Uh, the uh, Professor X had another team of new. Oh gosh, it's second, not second Genesis. Uh, whatever it was called, yeah. awful. Like it's, I, I get why you know it, it seems like a cool idea, but I always was wondering if they did that. Uh, first mean, time I ever saw Doctor Who was in the early to mid '80s. Tom Baker was the current Doctor, the one to whom I gravitated. Uh, nothing disparaging against any other actor, or actress. I think you always cling on to that one that speaks to you, right? Like, yeah. Uh, I think Tom Baker was a lot of America's first Doctor. Oh, if he oh, lived oh, in yeah. the '80s and you had oh, PBS, yeah. yeah. Um, what was your first Doctor, uh, Lars? Was it was it Sylvester? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I, 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 I keep telling the story and it's absolutely true. Um, my parents were not fond of science, this weird science fiction thing. Um, oh. And they, uh, but however, there was, there entered this weird window where they would let me watch Doctor Who um, because they tricked themselves into thinking it was a veterinarian show. Um, because the doctor, <laughs> because the doctor was Peter Davison. And Peter Davison was on All Creatures Great and Small. And on Iowa Public Television, it's it's it, it was the viewing that my family could agree on. We would watch Maverick at 5 o'clock and All Creatures Great and Small at 6 o'clock. So you got this character, and he's called The Doctor, and he's played by Peter Davison. Obviously, it's a veterinarian show, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was desperate to have them not figure this out. And I had a copy of the novelization to The Visitation, it just had a publicity photo for Peter Davison on the cover. So nothing, nothing too shocking on the cover. Well, my mother found it and she started reading it. Oh, no. Yes. And I was like, oh God, the gig is up. <laughs> and the, the opening of the visitation is a bit flowery. It's like, it was dark in the woods. Um, a fox ran by. There was a woman in a, the upper story of a house with a quill writing something. And my mother's like, okay, okay. And she put it down before the android came into the house and murdered everybody. Um, and I was like, okay, good. <laughs> she still thinks it's a veterinarian show. Um, and, and by the time they figured out that it was not a veterinarian show, it was too late. Too late. <laughs> no, but, but, but one last thing. By the way, the first story, though, I, I actually sat down to watch was Modern Undead. Uh, and people go, well, Modern Undead, that's got so much continuity. How can you make any sense of it? It's not that hard to figure out for a newcomer. You're like, the Brigadier is the Doctor's best friend. The Black Guardian, the guy in black with the crow on his head who's cackling, is evil. Mm -hmm. Not hard to figure out what's going on. We sometimes overestimate the pre-knowledge people need. You know, I, I watched I Modern and Dead and thought I understood all of it. Yeah. Deadly Genesis, thank you. Oh, full. Ah, uh, the, yeah. the doctor's much like the Joker. The more you know, the more he becomes less interesting. I like that. Yeah. And yet people like the Joaquin Phoenix uh, Joker so much. <laughs> and Origins, Deadly Genesis, thank you all. Deadly Genesis. Um, that was how the show began. It is, it's in the title, Doctor Who. And after the time, the mystery was chipped away. The timeless children restored the original mystery of the show. We no longer know who he is. Yeah, I just, uh, but after 60 years of him being a time lord and everything else, I, I don't see that it's injected that much mystery. And also it's come with, it's, it's a whole, he was the the original time lord. And, and, and before William Hartnell, the doctor was six, there's seven, six or seven children in a lab who were presumably being murdered by their mother. Um, and then was a bunch of men in wigs that we see in Morbius. It just makes a mess of everything. 
It's made a complete mess of everything. The moment you go to try to explain this, like I am, it just it's a huge mess. It should be William Hartnell was the first one. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But yeah, it's injected all this confusion, and I I don't see what actual benefit we've gotten from it. The two fan favorites are Tom Baker and David yeah. Tennant. Baker still is the doctor with the longest tenure. Yeah, he, he was around for quite a while. It now, what, you count, but yeah. Is he, um, was he ready to leave? Oh, when he left originally? Because he didn't come back for the crossover, right? The five doctors? No, um, no, no. I mean, how, how should I put this delicately? By the time Tom Baker got ready to leave in his last year, he thought he shouldn't be there and everyone else thought he shouldn't be there too. Um, he wasn't, he, he wasn't, he wasn't fired. It's just that I think everyone was like, including him was like, it's time to go. It's time so you to think go. Captain Jack, the, the, the set. Did he? Did he Captain Jack the set? <laughs> uh, sorry. In the feed, Rich Johnston is saying so much love for the target novelizations. Yeah. There are some target novelizations that are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, they were a lifeline back in the day when you couldn't watch the video. And um, there's some, some like the massacre and the myth makers, the novelization of those are just terrific. Yeah. Have you seen the goblin song clip from the Christmas special? No, because I don't watch trailers. <laughs> no, he doesn't watch trailers. And I didn't know there was one. Are you, are you talking about like actual goblins, Bruce, or the band goblin? Like, what are we no, talking about? There are actual goblins. I believe there's there are actual, actual goblins. Well, oh, there's trailers? actual oh, they're goblins. Yes. Okay. My, my sister messaged me and said, there's goblins in the next episode of Doctor Who. I said I don't know. I haven't watched Australia oh, yeah. yet, but I guess I'm going to. I forgot to. <laughs> your sister. Your sister really liked Doctor Who too. It, it, yeah, did she, she stop was, or did she keep going? No, no. She was. She had a long diatribe about how she's also not happy with the bi generation. So no, I, I didn't know people were upset, but I, I, it makes sense, right? It, it is adding something new. Russell Tess, has. My, Oh, God. Did you all rate the last? Did we rate the last episode? Because I, I would give it a nine and a half out of ten. I love. Yeah, it. I, 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 again with I, I put an asterisk on it because the toy maker is easily defeated and the whole domestic thing. I, I have mixed feelings about. I'd say at least a nine out of ten. Yeah. I was what about you, Amanda? I was going to give it a nine out of ten. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Ten's mine specifically. Ten. Fourteen. Ruin. Ten. And as a doctor for me, nothing will touch series two through four and the specials. I don't. You know, two through four are amazing. Yeah. They were good. I mean, not, they there were also some bad episodes through there too. Like there oh, are oh, undeniably. Uh, fear, her. <laughs> fear her. Fear her is meant fear not good. Yeah. Blood family. Oh, that was a great. I like those. Yes, it is just wrong. I haven't seen it. Okay, I need to see this thing. Yes, actual yes. goblin. Yeah, Avi was not well, happy with it. Uh, here, here's the weird thing. I don't watch trailers. But usually I'll see headlines and I'll, you know, read interviews. Russell has basically said Doctor Who's, it seems like it's going to go more of a fantasy bent. Um, that people mm -hmm. who like to traditionally look at Doctor Who as hard sci-fi are maybe going to be somewhat disappointed. Um, because, you know, fantasy plays by very different rules. But, you know, the Toymaker is a fantasy character, basically. For sure, yeah. The yeah. The, the, yeah. So, um, Yeah. I told her anything can be an alien if you want it to be. Well, oh, right. Yeah. And the old <laughs> the old rule about, you know, advanced science is indistinguishable from magic. And so, yeah. That's exactly. Awesome. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Lars, who has the best continuity? <laughs> Doctor Who or X-Men? You better <laughs> answer that. Uh, Careful, <laughs> Lars. No, no, both have their strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, wait, wow. Goblins is crossing the line. That's what I'm wondering. Where are people upset about we were, I was watching Amanda and I, um, and I and Melanie. Now we're going to be reviewing the or doing a was it really that good on the trilogy of the Lord of the Rings? And we are That's doing the extended exactly. cut because that is the only cut to watch. Yeah. So my wife and I are currently watching the Return of the King, and there was one aspect of Return of the King that always bothered me. That I'm like, they crossed the line here. It's still my favorite book. It is still my favorite movie. Okay, and she's like. Why does that bother you? And I'm like, I don't know, but it's when he goes and gets help from the ghosts. And I was like, I don't mind goblins, really? orcs, urukai, giant mammoths, elves, whatever. I really, but you throw ghosts into the story, and I'm like, what the hell? The man the man? I know, I know. It, it always bothered me. But it's funny because the way Josh says it, really, that's where we're drawing the line. Goblins. It's true. Yeah, I mean, ghosts. Yeah, remember the the 
the zombie like create things in the water. Well, I remember they're called. Oh yeah, in, well, we're gonna be. That's exactly Super what she Earth. said. I'm like, I didn't have a problem with that. They didn't come and save the day. Ghosts can't come and save the day. Anyway, we'll we'll talk about it next week. Okay, they might have been MacGuffin. It's fine. I don't care. It was a great scene when they come through. I don't care. What, what is the weirdest episode of Doctor Who, Lars? That that you were like, okay, this is ridiculous. Uh, well, do you mean in terms of the story or the effects or the what? No, no, not the effects. God, no, not the effects. Uh, the story. Um, what's the most wretched? What's uh, one that you were? Where <laughs> you draw the line? Like, okay, this is just, well, okay. Well, well, I will, I will, I will, I, I will tell you this story that, like, so again, I, I'm a huge fan of the '60s. Um, you know, well, I like this thing. I like all eras of Doctor Who. I'm very lucky. I, I, there's so much Doctor Who. I kind of, sort of in degrees enjoy all of it um but i love the 60s and but if you'd asked me on reflex what are your least favorite stories from the 60s i would have said oh galaxy four and the underwater menace and then in 2011 i thought i was living in a fever dream because the i'm on the internet and the headline comes up two missing episodes of doctor who have been recovered and what are they galaxy four and the underwater menace <laughs> the two stories I least wanted to see, and I, of course, every returns a, you know a joy. But I was I was sitting like, is this real? Is this not real? Am I being punked? Um, yes, my my two my two least ones from the sixties came back. Um, uh, actually, from the new series, Sleep No More, which is the one with the eye booger monsters, does attain the dizzying heights. A lot of stories are boring. And a lot of them are bad, and that one was bad and boring at the same time, which is really odd. What uh, what season was that? That was season nine. Oh, okay, got it. That was Peter okay. Capaldi. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That was not good. That was not gotcha. Good. Okay. Um, this this also bothered me, but I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, my biggest oh, problem true. with 14 is we never got Tennant wearing yeah. Jody's clothes. For some reason, he regenerated clothes, but then yeah. that went back to normal with the clothes shared on the yeah. generation. The doctor regenerating clothes has happened before with Hartnell to Troughton. Troughton does wake up in, for whatever reason, in his the Troughton doctor's clothes. Um, Russell gave an interview saying that they didn't put tenant in jody's clothes because he says i'm a great respecter of drag shows and cross-dressing uh ah. he says oh, that, that is a great tradition but he says if we'd had david tenant in jody's clothes it would have just been the endless subject of mockery and derision from bad actors on the internet mm -hmm. um that's why they just they just like well we'll just put david in david's clothes yeah that introduced me to the guy from Inside Number Nine. So the <laughs> Iber man led me to something great. <laughs> great. If, well, you, there we if go. you all haven't seen Inside Number Nine, that is one of the most <laughs> brilliant <laughs> shows ever. I, have you seen Inside Number Nine, Lars? I've not had time. I've wanted to. Oh my god! Know. Every episode is brilliant. So every episode is Probably all is. written and acted by these two guys. Okay. I think they're on series four or five. Well, yeah. And well, they all revolve around the number nine. Some of the most brilliant yeah. television I've ever seen has is, come out of that it, show. Is it Pemberton and Shearsmith? From League of Gentlemen? I think, yeah, I think. I, yes, 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 it is. Oh, there we go. If you like it, send it is, yeah. It is League of Gentlemen. Oh, now, the League of Gentlemen is really great. <laughs> okay. It's depraved and awful in parts, but it's great. Um, that one I've seen. Dude, every episode of that series is brilliant. Like, okay. I remember showing it to a few friends of mine when we all got together at a cabin a few years back and all of them were like, that is probably the most smartest written TV I've ever seen. Like, it, they are freaking brilliantly done. Yeah, it's great, man. Okay. Yeah, if you if you haven't had a chance, like, make some time to watch some episodes. Because they're not, like, it's each each is a standalone episode, right? And they, oh, and the actors just play different characters. They're so good at it. Yeah, I think it's on BritBox. I just haven't had time to watch it. It is, it is. Yeah. And there's a League sequel in, in yes, that is right. That's strange. And it's got Clara in it, right? Yep, with Clara the actress. I remember okay. that one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Inside number nine is what the League of Gentlemen did if Black Mirror is horror comedy rather than sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree. Okay. 
Okay. It's really good if you can uh, find it. I mean, there's, um, there's, there's just too much good television of late. I mean, we're going to see the new Miyazaki film uh, this weekend, but I first, Chris and I had to stop to marathon bodies um, over the weekend, and we've been watching mm-hmm. a murder at the end of the world. So there's just too much good television at the moment. Um, what's what was the last one? The a, last murder, a, a murder at the end of the world, which is uh, on Hulu. Um, which is basically, it's been touted as the girl with the dragon tattoo meets Agatha Christie, which is pretty accurate. That is actually correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Who's in it? That one out. Uh, honestly, no one that I think you would recognize except for Clive. Okay. Owen. Um, uh, I do recognize that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah. I love that guy. I'm slightly ashamed to say I didn't immediately recognize anyone else in there, you know, but oh. yeah. Yeah. James wasn't able to get into a murder at the end of the world. Well, sir, that's only because you're broken inside. And um... <laughs> well, poor James. Oh, I, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Oh man, Fallout oh, House. Of- yeah. I heard that was good too. I heard that was really good too. Yeah. It's one of my yeah. favorite shows this year. It was great. Yeah, Mike Flanagan. Um, everything. I mean, I've except for the murder. Is it the Midnight Club? Um, yeah, I did not. Of- well, he didn't really do a lot with that though. He's like, more of just a producer in it. Yeah. But Midnight yeah. Club wasn't. I think Midnight. I have the same issue with Lock and Key, the TV show. I just don't know who the oh. target audience is. It's like too mature for teens, <laughs> but it's too teeny for mature audiences. So I don't know right. like what exactly they're trying to pitch here. But yeah, uh, Lock and Key, I think, went on to three seasons. Three seasons, yeah. Yeah, but Midnight you know, Midnight Club did get canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Prince was it only Diana. supposed to be? A- yeah. Oh, Emma Corrin. Okay. She's in that. I do recognize her. She was Princess Diana in The Crown yeah. in the Crown. last season. This season is DeBecky. Oh, I don't remember her first name. Looking forward to the Christmas episode. So the ratings yeah, are 8 out of 10 for Star Beast, Wild Blue Yonder 9, and The Giggle 9. Good night. Good night, Annex. And my biggest recommendation of anything right now on BBC sounds John Finnemore's. Really? near program series nine trust me i refer to it as big numbers the sitcom huh interesting okay yeah yeah i don't know what uh what, what are we getting next week what if is that coming yes out? yes comes out next week yeah 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 i'm um, sure you're very excited for that omar i am not i did <laughs> not like i did he not, did not like, like the what if first did season not at like all. season one at all i think i, I like one episode out of the batch I watched no. What If with some people who are not, you know, dying in the world Marvel fans, and they quite enjoyed it. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, I, I, I get that it's. I mean, obviously, people liked it. There's a second season. Yeah. 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 Tomorrow's the final episode of The Crown, and you, you caught oh, you, you Haka shows for real coming out as a live. I thought that was just a joke. Okay, cool. I may watch that. I really like the anime. I didn't realize the crown was doing it. Was it doing it episodes weekly? I thought it was just they were just it's, dropping. It, it's oh. not weekly, but they broke the last season in half. That's what they did. Okay. Well, I like the Stranger Things and okay, gotcha. Okay. Perfect. And hold on a second here. Next week is anyone but you in Rebel Moon. Okay. I know people have strong feelings about Snyder, but I it looks know. so good. It looks so good. <laughs> I want to believe. I want to believe. I'm not even a Snyder bro. I, I actually like Justice League, the Snyder cut. Yeah, Lars, I, I, you on that? I think that oh, Zack Snyder has been a cancer on entertainment for about <laughs> you know 10, 15 years. <laughs> not not that I have any strong feelings on the matter. So I well, here's the thing. You know, my wife is an immense Star Wars fanatic, and so mm-hmm. but I and so I said to her, well, you know, th- this is basically Zack Snyder doing Star Wars. I think. Um, are you interested? And if she'd said yes, I would have watched it. But she's like, eh, I'm not into Zack Snyder. I think I can skip it. I'm like, okay, so we'll what? You guys are crazy, man. Okay, I mean, not everything's a hit, right? But not everything's a hit. I mean, th- look, it's a different discussion. We're here to talk about Doctor Who, I suppose. But uh, Batman versus Superman gets my vote for the worst film of the decade. I mean, it was a shocking. It was a bad. I'll never forget watching that film in theaters with Omar. Dude, I physically got sick. You remember that, Amanda? Like you I had to go throw up. I and, then I, and then we spilled our popcorn, and you had to crunch through. Everything. 
Yeah. What, uh, our experience what, watching what, that in the theater was awful. Awful. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You, you, what made you nauseous? You genuinely threw up. Oh, um, I think wherever we ate, I had yeah. uh, like it gave me food poisoning, but I blamed it on Batfleck. Um, my, my, my one thing I remember coming out of the theater was I had just, um, Talk, uh, my daughter and I were re-watching the Batman movies with uh, by uh, Nolan. She was young. She was like four or five years old at the time. And I was giving her, you know, the, the simple rules of Batman. I'm like, you know, Batman doesn't kill. Because like, she even drew a picture of Batman killing Bane and the school counselor called me and she's like, hey, your daughter. Oh, drew oh. Uh, So I had to explain to my daughter. I was like, it's a beautiful picture, first of all. You have blood everywhere. <laughs> is, is it framed amazing in the use of amazing use of red? Uh, but then as I was watching Batman for Superman, I was like, when Batman's gunning down the bad guys, oh, I was like, Jesus God Christ. damn it, Affleck, I just I, told my daughter Batman doesn't kill. Well, that and also like okay, even even if we were to agree, there's times and places Batman needs to kill somebody. Yes. This was just gratuitously awful. I mean is is a mock he has this guy has Ma Kent captive and to save her Batman burns this guy alive and it's like you're Batman you could disable him so many ways but I have to burn him alive I mean come on um <laughs> for what it's what he was doing Snyder executed the DCU very well that being said uh, his only great film is yes, 300 the problem is what he was going for um the, the show, the, this is why I actually I like going to movies in theaters, probably because I enjoy it, but also because I enjoy seeing the audience's reaction. The showing of Batman versus Superman that I went to, there was a child on my right flank and a child on my left. And by child, I mean like they were like seven, eight or something like that. Um, didn't know each other. And they were bawling their eyeballs out mm -hmm. um, because they were just being traumatized by what they were watching you know, on screen. And it's like, I mean, this is why Zack Snyder shared this t-shirt that says, I literally make children cry. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, Zack Snyder. I, I, I happen to enjoy some of his films. I'm uh, Not all of them. Actually, I, Bruce just mentioned Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch was an unspoken masterpiece that no one should speak <laughs> about. <laughs> I uh, kind of agree with that. I, honestly, the only Zack Snyder movie I've never seen is the Owl movie. I haven't, Searchers, is that what it was called? It was after he did Watchmen, I think. Or maybe it was right before he did Watchmen. Um, well, I, and I, and I think for what it was, Watchmen was okay. It there, was. No, it, no, you, no, you're right. It, no, it no was. No, it was. Well, movie. forgive me. I, I actually wrote a column about this for Sci-Fi Bulletin, and it was to say that, you know, in interviews, Snyder, Snyder totally admits that he his new Superman and Batman movies, he framed, he based them on Watchmen, basically. And it's like, yes, he put, oh. out a, he put out a Watchmen movie that's got a lot going for it. But the moment you say Superman should be more like Batman, or sorry, Watchmen, your inner compass is so far off. I mean, words mm -hmm. almost fail. Yeah. So. Also, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, the God. Al the Gahul, the Guardians of Gahul. That's Yo, what it was. Uh, his remake of Dawn of the Dead, for what it was, was actually pretty solid. I think, like I said, there are some good Snyder films. I don't. You like the Army of the Dead? Didn't we review that? That Netflix original that. No, I didn't like that one. And it was a prequel to his other movie, too, or set in the same universe as his other movie. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Favorite classic and modern who? I am, I've only seen, like, a few of Ooh. the originals. So I got, yeah. uh, maybe The Five Doctors. I really like that one because I had seen that in its, uh, as far as the classic. The new one? Are we talking, it, are we talking stories here or doctors? Stories. Oh yeah, we can do stories. Can do stories. Okay, what's your favorite modern story? Oh, uh, Human Nature. Love okay. it. Paul Cornell. Yeah, I, I yeah. interviewed him on my show, and I was like, I know we're here to talk about comics, but you wrote my favorite episode of Doctor Who ever. I love it. The freaking brilliant. Did you now? Your your Wolverine though, uh, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, everybody <laughs> says that. He's such a nice guy. Um, well, what about you, Amanda? What's your favorite? I know you haven't seen a lot of classic either, but uh, no, I have not seen a lot of classic either. But oh gosh, for the modern human nature is good. Blink, I don't know. Yeah, Blink is good. It's hard to decide what's my favorite. 
I really do like Midnight, though. That might be one of my favorites, mainly because of the way it's acted, because I think it's well done. Um, Lars, just one. <laughs> I I can restrain. I, I have discipline. Um, favorite classic Doctor Who is The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, um, the Sylvester McCoy story um, with the psychic circus, um, which is just wonderful. I like stories that can surprise me. I like stories that I don't know where they're going. Favorite modern would be Gridlock because Gridlock. Really? Yeah, because Gridlock, Gridlock's a sort of episode that's very interesting. And like, you get 15 minutes in, and you're like, I have no idea where this is going. And you get 30 minutes in, and you're like, I have no idea where this is yeah, going. Yeah, that does yeah, feel like and then, and, then you, and then you get to the end, and you're like, oh, that's where it was going. And it makes sense with what you've seen before that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And Greatest Show in the Galaxy is quite surprising as well. I, I remember at the time sitting there going, what on earth is going on here? And then, you know, you start to figure it out. So, yeah. Spearhead from space. Oh, and space. My favorite thing is Heaven Sent. Heaven those Sent. Yep. I really like Heaven Sent. Yeah, those are both great one. choices. Yeah, those are both very great choices. Yeah. Um, anything else to discuss tonight before we end, Amanda? Uh, no, I think, I mean, with three minutes to go, I think that is all we have for tonight. Okay. But yes, but we will be back next week, next Wednesday. Same time same place to do a wasn't really that good of the lord of the rings trilogy the extended cuts <laughs> which just give yes. us all an excuse to talk about how much we love lord of the rings maybe i don't know maybe one of us doesn't really like it as much as we think we do maybe rewatching it you're like man the ghost army not so bad but yeah. i guess one way to find out favorite classic damon's modern um really phil you can't think of oh, one you, you can you know? think of one your boy you newton was in an episode recently man oh, you uh, meant doctors. Be... oh sorry oh, yeah I, 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 I thought he meant our favorite doctors yeah mm -hmm. yeah um oh. david Tennant, modern classic tom baker i don't think tom yeah i would say tom baker because what i've known or seen although john the third doctor is kind of badass too. I kind of liked him from some of the episodes I remember watching. But Tom Baker, probably, yeah. I don't know. It's hard. I really do love David Tennant, but Matt Smith he won me yeah. over someone that I I don't know. It's Smith so is hard. good. Smith was good. He grew on me. Yeah. What about you, Lars? I mean, mm. classic. I'd say Sylvester again, Sylvester McCoy. Um, new. I, I, I'm not sure I can actually pick one i mean david Tennant's really great matt smith is really great i love mm. peter capaldi i eccleston is eccleston was a great pick to bring the series but i'm not sure i can pick one yeah i don't mean to whistle i don't mean i don't mean to you know chicken out i just uh, they're all they're all really great yeah yeah well it, it's because sylvester mccoy plays his doctor so distinct from the other classic ones that that's why I can settle in on him. But you know, again, I, I love a lot of the classic ones. I like William Hartnell. I think Hartnell's really great. Um, a lot of people love Patrick Troughton. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Time crash. Oh my God. <laughs> because it's over quickly. Wow. Oh <laughs> my so God. Mr. McCoy is such a good actor. Like, he had bird crap on his head the entire time in Lord of the Hobbit. That's how good of an actor he was. Yes. In an otherwise okay movie, at least he was a bright spot. Oh, man, the Hobbit. Right, over that's what we should do. Was, was it really that bad? Because I think but it's But which one? Bad. The whole series? The whole, the whole three? trilogy? The five? Like, Wait. You, well, dude, you, you, you know me. Like, I love, like, extended cuts. Like, Aliens. My daughters have only seen Aliens. The director's cut in this house there's only the lord of the rings extended cut i feel like there needs to be a like a more condensed version of the hobbit like, well, a, fandom, like a, maybe a two has, hour movie yeah. there's them down the hobbit but you you were cutting out lars what did yeah, you say i'm sorry there. I think he was just so shocked about the Hobbit. Cut, yeah, I know. I know. Out, Lars. The, 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 the Hobbit, the Hobbit yeah. will stun you into submission with this length. I was um, going to say, yeah. man. 
Yeah. Considering the book itself is not that long. <laughs> no, I, no, it, it, it was a. Tra I can see why they did it though, because you know, by splitting the three, they probably made another billion dollars, and it would be it, only oh, having two. Like, yeah. well, how would you? How would you like to not make a billion dollars? So I get why they did it, but ugh, it's it's. Too they much. should be glad they didn't make it in twenty twenty three because I don't know if it would have made yeah. that money. Mm -mm. Uh well, that's a very good question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, also they would have overspent because of COVID and everything else. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's what Disney's problem is right now. Yeah, they overspend too much those. on a lot of their films. They, they really are. They really are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Lars, we're you're coming back to join me tomorrow at six p.m. But it's going to be a different right time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yes, yes. Tomorrow, tomorrow, if you can uh, join us at well six o'clock central, so seven o'clock Eastern. Eastern, right? Eastern time. Eastern time. Damn it, oh, Lars. Damn Sorry. It, Lars. <laughs> I know. I'm hopeless. Uh, so six p.m. Real time. Six o'clock Eastern. Uh, and we're going to be with other learned, funny people examining our picks for the DC Evergreen list. And you can find Lars at the oh, Mad you. Norwegian yeah, Press. Thank you, thank yeah, you yeah, for yeah. that, James Abel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and our, our, our two. Yeah, our we did. Two. Oh, and yeah. I, I did forget to mention this because I, I was really shocked about the death of Andre Brauer. Oh, he was one yeah. of my favorite actors yeah. ever since the glory. I've loved it. I, I remember when I was a kid and I watched it, and I was like, that guy's going to be huge. And then, of course, he was on uh, Homicide, Life on the Street. Comic related, I think he did the voice of Darkseid in in, well, in, in, in in one of the Superman animated yeah. movies. So yeah. that's about how I can connect it to comics, though. He was an amazing actor in yeah. Damn. Yeah. And yes, Ian Gibson passed away, too. He'd been sick for a little right. bit. Right. I, I, didn't, like, I didn't grow up reading Ian Gibson because I grew up in America and Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, until the beginning of this year. Was it this year? Maybe late last year that I read, finally read the Halo Jones story that everybody talks about yeah. by Alan Moore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lost two great people, man. Yeah. How are the studios handling with Godzilla kicking ass at 15%? <laughs> <right? laughs> man, I don't know. <laughs> Yo, man, that, that movie, I was ready to I was ready to do a reels talk about myself after watching that movie. <laughs> like it was so good. Godzilla minus one no, is it. so damn good. He'll for every be oh, Captain Colt for me. Yeah, yeah he's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rise of the Silver Surfer. He was the voice of was he the voice of the Silver Surfer? No, no, no. He was the he was in it. I fell asleep through that movie. Apologies. It's just a bad movie. Um yeah. it's a bad movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and don't forget, we, also have, we also have Aquaman 2 next Friday as well. Oh, yes, Aquaman 2. So don't forget. Thank you for that reminder. Yes. Or do. I, uh, yeah. I, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. We we did go to Aquaman 1. I don't think we'll be mustering the energy to go to Aquaman 2. But yeah. um, We'll tell you how it is. It could, be <laughs> the, it could be the box office saving grace of the year. No, that was Barbie and Taylor Swift. It could outdo Swift. Barbie. You don't know. It's not over yet. No, it's not. It is over. It's it not is over. over. I, I am not wholly confident America wants another Aquaman movie, so we'll you see. You don't know that either, Lars. I don't. No, I, no, I don't. No, it could, it, could, it could be a, you know, box office All success. Needs but is I, Michael Keaton I, in a bat suit. Well, no, apparently we don't. The last movie, last movie bombed. It was quite horrible, if I may say. That was another of those films I can only watch it on fast forward. Um, <laughs> just like he's running, just fast forward. Just yeah. like he's running. No, I, I watched the Jack Snyder or the original one, the theatrical Jack. Oh, I'm getting weird. Zack Snyder Justice League. Uh, mm -hmm. I only got through that on you know double speed at closed captioning as well. But smart. It was so good. You wanted to start it over again, like get to the <laughs> no, ending and get it uh, going yes, again. Yes, that's yeah. exactly it. Yes, yes. It was. I was that overcome with emotion. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Lars, thank you for joining us. This was a lot of no, fun. No, it was if, a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. If there, if if there ever is another Doctor Who video that we do, we we'll, we will know to reach out to a couple of other people, and if they can't make it, we will yeah, definitely certainly. reach out to you. No, no, uh, you, no, you, you totally should. They'll probably charge less than I do. So yeah, a, a oh, lot yeah. less. A yeah. lot less. <laughs> uh, but thank you everybody for joining us, Amanda. Take it away. Of course. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and remember to follow us on all of our social media channels at, at Near Mint Con. Remember to check us out on Spread Shop for some great Near Mint condition merchandise, and also check us out on Patreon for a dollar a month or more. You can support us here in what we do and great get some great perks along the way. Last but not least, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. 
Good journey to all are one. And we will see you all later. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Man, there, where you been, Kingsport Cow? You just make it to the <laughs> air. <laughs> he been this whole time. <laughs>